Welcome to this course, Blind 75 Lead Code Questions is Algorithms Coding Interview. In this course, we are going to solve famous Blind 75 Lead Code Questions for a technical coding interview. If you are looking for a job at Mang or Mang like company, then this is the course for you. Blind 75 Lead Code Questions is a list of 75 most frequently asked lead code algorithms question which had helped many engineers clear the interviews at google facebook amazon microsoft netflix etc it is a tested list of questions with thousands of testimonials available on all public review platforms such as Quora, teamblind reddit etc the 75 Questions covers many topics such as array, binary number, dynamic programming, graph, interval, linked list, matrix, a string, tree, and heap. Blind 75 lead code questions is super famous to the tech industry for coding interview settings. Blind 75 lead code questions covers most of the important topics for a coding interview settings if you want to prepare yourself for the coding interviews if you're planning interviewing at man company then this is the course for you we have detailed explanation of every single questions after finishing this course you will have confident if you finish this course efficiently then you're ready to get offer from big tech industry some of my students got offer from big tech industry if you want to get a job at big tech industry enroll this course right now we have 30 day money back guarantee so what are you looking for hey you what's up guys welcome back to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question to some given an array of integers nums and an integer target return indices of two numbers such that they add up to target so in this problem we are given an array of integers nums and a target we have to return the indices of two numbers such that they add up to target you may assume that is input would have exactly one solution and you may not use the same element twice so is input have exactly one solution and we cannot use same element twice and we can return the answer in any order order doesn't matter for example this is the first example in this example, we are given this nums array and a target 9. We have to find out two element in this array such that it add up to this target 9. We have in this array 2 and 7, these two element that add up to this target 9. 2 plus 7 equals to the target element 9. So we have to return the index of this element 2 and 7 that is 0 and 1 we can return this index in any order order doesn't matter we might have one zero this is our second example in this example we are given this nums array we have three elements and we have target 6 and we see that the two element 2 and 4 add up to 6 so we have to return the index of this element 2 and the index of this element 4 that is 1 and 2 for this input we have these two integer 3 and 3 and target 6. Here we see this two element add up to this target. So we have to return the index of this two element 0 and 1. This is the problem. Now how to solve this problem? We can solve this problem using two nested for loop pretty easily. If we run two nested for loop, one loop will point to this first element and the nested loop will iterate from this element all the way to the end for the first iteration of the outer loop and we have here two now we have to find out an element here that is nine minus two seven we see there is no seven so we will move 
our outer loop to the next element here and we're going to find out the element that is 9 minus 1 8 we see we have here 8 so we have to return the index of this element and of this element that is 1 and 4 but this algorithm will takes of n square time complexity this is not the super efficient algorithm to solve this problem the space complexity of this algorithm is constant but this is a quadratic time solution this is not super efficient we can solve this problem in linear time complexity using the concept of hash map data structure let's see how to solve this problem using hash map data structure in a linear time complexity first let's create hash map data structure we know hash map is a key value here so let's create hash map data structure let's assume this is our hash map data structure now we're going to iterate this array from left to right and we will store the value and the index if we have duplicates then we will store the index of last element here we have two so let's add here key 2 and the index is 0 then we have here 1 so key 1 the index 1 then we have 3 the element 3 and index 2 then we have 5 the index of 5 is 3 so here 5 and here 3 then the last element is 8 so let's add here 8 and the index of 8 is 4 if we have duplicates element let's say we have here another element 1 then what we have to do we have to update this index 1 with the index of this one so we have constructed this hash map data structure up until this point we have scanned this array from left to right once now we're gonna scan this array from left to right again now we're gonna find the difference of target and this current element the difference between target and this current element 2 is 7 9 minus 2 is 7 now we're gonna search in this hash map we can do that in constant time we see that 7 does not exist so we'll move to the next element now we see 9 minus 1 is 8 8 exists so we find out our answer so we have to return the index of 1 and the index of this of this element here we have on hash map so we find out our answer and we see that this element and this element add up to this target 9 this is the solution to this problem if we have input like this then this algorithm will fail let's see why it will fail let's find out the index let's construct the hash map so the index of 2 is 0 the index of 3 is 1 the index of 4 is the index of 4 is 2 okay so we constructed this hash map for this input we have this array and we have this target 4 now what i'm going to do i'm going to find out the difference between the target and the current element so 4 minus 2 is 2 and we see 2 exist right since 2 exist what you will do we will find out the index of 2 that is 0 and here the index of 2 is 0 so it's produced a wrong answer in that case what i will do I will check the index if we find the difference and the different exists in our hash map that means 4 minus 2 2 2 exists in the hash map if the if the difference exists then we will check the index if index if the index are the same then we will skip we will not find out the pair we'll find it invalid pair in this case right we find out invalid pair so we will not find it here we will skip we will move to the next element we have talked about the a sketch to solve this problem we are scanning this array twice but we can solve it without scanning twice we can solve it in one patch let's see how to solve this problem in single pass first let's construct our hash map data structure let's assume this is our hash map data structure okay this is our hash map data structure we will have your key value here as key we will have the element and as value we will have the index now let's traverse this array from left to right first we have two first thing what i'm going to do i'm going to find out the difference between target and this current element that is seven nine minus two is seven 
7 does not exist. Since 7 does not exist, we're going to insert this 2 as key and the index 0 as value. Let's move to the next element. This is our next element. Now let's find out the difference. The difference is 9 minus 1 is 8. 8 does not exist in our hash map. So let's insert this element 1 as key and the index as value. Let's move to the next element that is 3. Now let's find out the difference. 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 does not exist in the hash map. So let's insert this element 3 and the index 2. Let's move to the next element. This is our next element. Let's find out the difference. 9 minus 5 is 4, but 4 does not exist in this hash map. So let's insert here 5 and the index 3. Now let's move to the next element. The next element is 8. Let's find out the difference. The difference between 9 and 8 is 1. And we see 1 exists in the hash map. So we find out a valid pair that add up to this target 9. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to return the index of this 1, that is 1, and the index of 8 is 4. So I'm going to return this 2 value as an array. This is how we can solve this problem in single patch. This algorithm will take big of in time complexity. We are scanning this array just once and it will take big of in space complexity. In naib approach, we solved this problem in n square time complexity. Now we solved this problem in linear time complexity. The space complexity was for the naib approach is constant, but here we see the space complexity is o of n we can trade off space complexity for better time complexity now let's see the implementation of this algorithm now let's implement our algorithm first let's create an array to store the answer new int of size 2 now let's create hash map data structure hash map integer integer let's call it map equals to new hash map now let's run a loop from index 0 all the way to the end. So for int i equals to 0, i less than nums dot length i plus plus. Now let's find out the difference between target and our current element. So int difference equals to target minus nums i. Now we're going to check if the difference exists in our hash map. So if Math dot contains key. This operation will take constant time. So here difference. If the difference exists in the hash map, then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna insert at index zero the index of i. So the index of i and at index zero. Here we're gonna insert whatever whatever index we have in our hash map for the different. So math dot get different. If we find out this, so we will break it. We don't need to we don't need to execute this for loop anymore. If we find out this pair. Otherwise, we're gonna insert into our hash map the current element and the current index. At the end, we will return the answer array. This algorithm will take of in time complexity and it will take of in space complexity now let's run this code accepted now let's submit it we have successfully solved this problem this is the algorithm to solve this problem hope you have understood how to solve this problem efficiently thanks for watching this video i will see you in the next video welcome to this video in this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question, best time to buy and sell stock. In this problem, you are given an array, price it, where price i is the price of a given stock on the ith day. You want to maximize your profit by choosing a single day to buy one stock and choosing a different day in the future. To sell the stock return the maximum profit you can achieve from the transaction if you cannot achieve any profit return 
is zero. So in this problem, we have to maximize our profit by buying at a single day one stock and by selling at a different day in the future. This is the problem statement. This is the first example. In this example, we have this prices array. In this array, we have 715364. If we buy a stock at this day at price 1 and if we sell at this day at price 6, then we will have the maximum profit 5. We cannot buy at 1 and sell at 7. If we buy at 1, we have to sell it in the future. This is the first example. This is the second example. In this example, we see that if we buy at any of the day and if we sell in the future, we will have no profit. So in this case, we have to return 0. Now, how to solve this problem? We can solve this problem by iterating the array using two nested loop. First, we have 7. Then we will we will find out the maximum value by selling at every single position and we will count the maximum of them. If we have negative value, then we will ignore that. We will have a variable, let's call it P for profit, profit equals to 0. Then if we buy at 7, if we sell at any of the day, we see we will have no profit. If we buy at 1, if we sell at 5, we will have profit 4. If we buy at 1, if we sell at 3, then we will have profit 2. That is not maximum. If we buy at 1, if we sell at 6, we will have profit 5. Then if we buy at 1, if we sell at 4, we will have profit 3. That is not maximum. And we will iterate this array using two nested follow until we raised all the way to the end. But this approach will take of n square time complexity. This is not an efficient algorithm to solve this problem. This algorithm also takes big of one space complexity. It works in constant space. Can we solve this problem in linear time? We see this is quadratic time complexity. Can we solve this problem in linear time complexity? Yes, we can solve this problem in linear time complexity. Let's see how to solve this problem in linear time complexity. In linear time complexity, we will have two pointer. Left pointer will point to the first element and right pointer will point to the second element. And if we have an array of length 1, then in that case, what I will do, we will just return 0. Because in that case, we cannot make any transaction. So, if we have an array of length 1, we should return 0. Now, here we have two pointer, left and right. Left pointer pointing to the first element and right pointer pointing to the second element. This is our initial step. Now, let's create a variable profit, profit equals to 0. Initially, we have in the profit variable 0. Now, we're going to check if the value at right pointer is greater than the value at left pointer. We will calculate the profit. We see here we have 1. 1 is not greater than 7. So, we cannot make any profit here. If we have the value at right pointer is greater than the value at left pointer, then we will have some profit and we'll keep track our maximum profit. But here we see that we have no profit. If we if we buy here and if we sell here, we will have 1 minus 7, that is minus 6. We will have loss 6 dollar if we consider each unit as a dollar. If we have the value at right pointer is less than the value at left pointer, we will shift left to the right pointer. We will have always just left pointer to the minimum value. So let's move left to this right. So left will point to this element. Now let's move right to the next. We have to move right to the next. We have processed this element. Now let's move right here. We have this element 5. Right pointer is pointing to this element 5. We see 5 is greater than 1. So we're going to calculate profit. So 5 minus 1 equals to 4. Let's take maximum of 4 and 0. That is 4. 
so we'll have profit equals to 4 at this point and we see that right is greater than left so we'll not shift left to right we'll only shift left to right if we find out left is pointing to the smaller element so let's move right to the next element here now let's find out the profit since this element 3 is greater than 1 so 3 minus 1 is 2 but we see maximum of 2 and 4 is 4 so we will not update this value we'll keep track the maximum profit now we see 3 is greater than so we'll not shift left to this element we'll have left pointed to the we'll have the left pointed to the smallest possible value now let's move right to the next now right will point to this element we see this is 6 6 is greater than 1 so let's calculate profit 6 minus 1 is 5 so max of 4 and 5 is 5 let's update this profit with 5 at this point we have the maximum profit 5 and we see right is not less than left so we're gonna move right to the next so right will point to this element now here we see that this element is greater than this element 1 so let's find out profit 4 minus 1 equals to 3 max of 5 and 3 is 5 so we'll not update this value of 5 and we'll not shift left to right because this element 4 is not less than 1 so we'll not shift it let's move right to the next element now we see we're out of the array boundary we are done we have the profit in this profit variable this is our profit we can gain from this given array this is how we can solve this problem this algorithm will take off in time complexity and it will take off one space complexity it will work in constant speech and it will take a linear time we're scanning the array from left to right only once so this algorithm will take linear time we will have some variable we will not use any additional data structure so this algorithm will take constant space complexity if we draw this array on a graph then we see that if we buy here at this point at price 1 and if we sell at price 6 right here then we will have the maximum profit hope you have understood this algorithm now let's implement this algorithm now let's implement our algorithm first we're gonna check the length if the length of the given array is 1 then we cannot make any transaction so in that case we have to return 0 so if price dot length equals to 1 we have to return 0 now let's create a variable profit int profit equals to 0 initially we have profit equals to 0 now let's create a left pointer left equals to 0 left will point to the first element now let's create right pointer int right equals to 1 the right pointer initially point to the second element while right is less than prices dot length then right plus plus now we're gonna check we're gonna check if the value at right pointer is greater than the value at left pointer then we'll calculate the profit and we'll take the maximum so let's check here if price h right is greater than price h left then we're gonna calculate the profit so profit equals to math dot max we're gonna take the maximum so profit and price h right minus prices left if this if statement evaluated false it means that the value at right pointer is less than or equals to the value at left pointer so in that case we'll shift the left pointer to right so left equals to right and at the end we'll return the profit this is our algorithm this algorithm will take off in time complexity and of one space complexity hope you've understood this video explanation now let's run this code accepted now let's submit it 
we have solved this problem efficiently this is the efficient solution of this problem thanks for watching this video welcome to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question contains duplicates in this problem given an array nums written true if any value appears at least twice in the array and written false if every element is distinct so in this problem we are given an array of integers if we are given an array 1 2 3 4 5 if we are given this array of 5 integers we have distinct integer in this array we see that there is no element appears more than once so for this input we should written false the array can be sorted also the given array can be unsorted if we're given an array something like this one two one two three if we're given these types of array in this array we see that two elements appears twice one appear twice and two appear twice so for this input we see at least one element appears twice so we should return true for this type of inputs this is the problem now let's see how to solve this problem let's assume we're given this array three four three let's assume that we're given this array of integers one two three four three now first thing what we can do we can sort the array if we sort the array we'll have something like this one two three three four now we will check the adjacent element if the adjacent element are the same we will return true if we find out any two adjacent element are same then we will return true here we see that these two adjacent three and three these two are the same so we can return true but sorting will take in log in time complexity this is sorting approach and the sorting algorithm also takes a space complexity o of n can you improve this solution yes we can improve this solution now let's see how to solve this problem in constant space complexity to solve this problem in constant space complexity we will use two nested for loop i will point to the first element j will point to the second element initially and we will move j to the all the way to the end and we'll keep counting our element at i that is one and i will move j to the right if we find it if we find out this element one on the right while moving j pointer will return true but this solution will take of n square time complexity this is not super efficient the space complexity is of one so we see that our time complexity was in log n for our previous solution for use sorting but now we see that our algorithm takes off n square time complexity but it will works in constant space can we solve this problem in linear time complexity yes we can solve this problem in linear time complexity now let's see how to solve this problem in linear time complexity now let's see how to solve this problem in linear time complexity in order to solve this problem in linear time complexity we'll use a set data structure initially our set is empty now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna iterate this given array from left to right first we have one one does not exist in our set so let's add it in our set then we have two does two exist in our set no so let's insert here then three does three exist in our set no so let's insert here three does four exist in our set no let's insert four now three does three exist in our set yes three exist so we find it duplicates we will return true this is how we can solve this problem using set data structure let's take another example let's assume we're given this array of integers now let's create a set data structure let's assume this is our set data structure now our first element one does one exist in our set no so let's insert in our set 
then we have 2 does 2 exist in our set no so let's insert here then 3 does 3 exist in our set no so let's insert here then 4 does 4 exist in our set no so let's insert in our set then 5 does 5 exist in our set no so let's insert 5 then we see we're out of bound we are done we find it no duplicates so we'll return false for this type of inputs this is how we can solve this problem this algorithm will take of n time complexity we have to scan the array once and it will take for the old sketch of n space complexity this is the algorithm to solve this problem now let's implement this algorithm first let's create our set data structure set integer integer let's call it set equals to new hash set this is our set data structure now let's iterate the given array from left to right so for int i equals to zero i less than nums dot length i plus plus right inside here we're gonna check if our current limit exists in our set if set dot contains if set dot contains nums i then what i will do will return true otherwise what we will do will insert in our set so set dot add set dot add nums i if we have no duplicates in the given array this this if statement will never be evaluated true so here at the end we will return just false this is the algorithm this algorithm will take of n time complexity and of n space complexity now let's run this code accepted now let's submit it accepted we have solved this problem thanks for watching this video welcome back to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question product of array except self this is the problem statement given an integer array nums return an array answer such that answer i is equal to the product of all the elements of nums except nums i the product of any prefix or suffix of nums is guaranteed to fit in 32-bit integer so we don't have to worry about overflow and we have to we have to design an algorithms that run in o of in time complexity and we cannot use division operator Okay, so we're given this array 1, 2, 3, and 4. We're given this array. We have to return an array. The array is called product except self array, we can say. So here at this position 1 in our product of uh, in our product array except self, what we have to store? We have to store the product except this element 1. So 2 times 3 times 4 equals to 24 so at this position we should have 24 and for 2 we have to find out the product except 2 so 1 times 3 times 4 equals to 1 times 3 times 4 equals to 12 here we should have 12 at the corresponding position and here right below 3 uh, for this 3 we have to find out the product except self so 2 times 1 times 4 equals to 8 then for 4 the product except self 3 times 2 times 1 that is 6 so here we should have 6 and we have to return this array okay we see that in this output this is the array and same for this input okay the product except minus 1 is 1 times 0 times minus 3 times 3 is 0 product except 1 0 the product of array element except 0 is minus 1 times 1 minus 1 times minus 3 so 3 times 3 9 here right and here we have 0 and 0 okay so for this input we should return this array and for this particular input we should return this array or we can say product except self array we have to solve this problem in linear time complexity and we cannot use division operator if we are allowed to use division operator then what we can do we can find out the product of all the element 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 equals to 24 so 
we can find out the product by multiplying all the element right so we find out the product so here we have 24 now we can now what I can do we can traverse the array and we can divide 24 at the value we have at the corresponding position for here we can divide 24 by 1 we get 24 here we have 2 we will divide 24 by 2 we get 12 and so on but in that case we have to use division operator but in this problem we cannot use division operator so without using division operator how we can solve this problem let's see how we can solve this problem using the concept of prefix and suffix product for example let's add him we're given this array of integers we have to return an array that array will store product except self for all or for every single element okay so what does this mean if we have uh, this array right here of same length here we'll have 24 right the product except 1 2 times 3 times 4 equals to 24 then 3 times 4 times 1 equals to 12 then we have here 4 times 2 times 1 product except self that is 8 and here we'll have 3 times 2 times 1 equals to 6 so we have to return this array and we have to return this array and we cannot use division operator also the constraint our algorithm must works in O of n runtime complexity so how we can solve this problem let's see how to solve this problem using the concept of prefix product and suffix product so first thing what we're going to do we're going to construct true array one is called prefix product so let's assume pv for prefix product let's construct this array first so here in prefix product array at is corresponding position we're gonna store the prefix product the prefix of one is nothing on the left so by default or by base case we can say we will uh, insert here one now let's move to the next element here we have two the product of prefix of two is just one okay so we will have it just one so at is corresponding position we're storing the prefix product for all element okay so for this element we have prefix product one and for this element prefix product it is uh, for this element prefix product is one let's move forward for three the prefix product of three is two times one that is two okay and the prefix product of four is three times two times one that is six so this is our prefix product array we will see how to construct this prefix product array using the concept of dynamic programming now let's construct the suffix product array so let's call it sp for suffix product so let's create an array right here and we will, we will construct this array from the right side now let's construct this suffix product array we're going to construct this suffix product array by scanning the array from right to left so here we have four so what is the suffix product of four on the right we have nothing so by default or you can say uh, this is our base kit if you have nothing on the right we will assume uh, the suffix product of four is one now what is the suffix product of three that is four so let's insert here four now what is the suffix product of two three times four that is uh, that is 12 what is the suffix product of one that is 2 times 3 times 4 equals to 24 okay so we find out prefix product and suffix product at this position we see we have the prefix product of 1 is 1 and the suffix product of 1 is 2 times 3 times 4 equals to 24 we have here 24 the prefix product of 2 is 1 we have here the suffix product of 2 is 12 we have here so what is the what is the prefix product of 3 what is the suffix product 4 what is the prefix product of 4 6 what is the suffix product of 4 1 now what we can do we can just multiply the corresponding prefix product and suffix product to find out the product except self array it's simple right we can just iterate uh, the array and we can just multiply it so if we multiply 24 and 1 we will get 24 
If we multiply if we multiply 12 and 1, we will get here 12. If we multiply here 2 and 4, we will get here 8. If we multiply 6 and 1, we get here 6. So we find out our we find out our product except self array and we will return this array. So for this we have to create three separate array prefix product, suffix product and for answer another array. So it it will takes actually it will takes big of 3n time complexity that's equivalent to a big O of n right. It will takes a uh, big of 3n space complexity as well um, that's equivalent to big of n right and that works in linear time complexity and it takes linear space so here we see that we maintain our condition we are not using the division operator to solve this problem but can we improve this solution yes we can improve how we can improve here we are creating two separate array prefix product and suffix product we don't have to create two separate array we can keep track any one of them prefix product or suffix product using only one variable okay first let's talk about how to populate the prefix product and suffix product array it's very simple let's see how by default we'll insert here one because on the left of one we have nothing now here we have two okay we'll just multiply one and one so we'll get here one and here for three we'll multiply this two and this one we'll get here two and here we'll multiply this three and two we'll get here uh, six this is how we can construct prefix product and we can construct suffix product in the same way and th this concept is called dynamic programming here we have four on the right we have nothing so we assume one uh, by default on the right of three we have four so we'll multiply four and one we get here four now here two so we'll multiply three and four we get twelve and here we have one we'll multiply two and twelve to get this value twenty four this is how we can find out prefix product and suffix product. So here, instead creating two separate array, we can create only one array, either prefix product or suffix product, and we can keep track any one of them using a variable. So for uh, this video, I'm going to I'm going to use a variable for suffix product. Let's let's use a variable here, not an array to reduce the space complexity as well as the time complexity so here what we will do we will add them on the right we have just one okay on the right we will have just one so what is the suffix product of four first we'll construct the prefix product then we will have suffix product equals to one we'll iterate this array from right to left so what do we have on the right of four on the right of four we have actually nothing so the suffix product of 4 is 1 what is the prefix product of 4 prefix product is here 6 and suffix product 1 so we'll multiply this 6 and 1 will get 6 so let's remove this array let's see how we can construct using one variable and one array so here we will have 6 now we will move to this this element here We'll have suffix product equals to 1, but in this time when we move to the left, we'll calculate suffix product. We'll multiply this 1 with this element 4. So suffix product changed to 4. Now our suffix product for 3 is 4. We, we, we can see here, right? Now here, what I will do, I'll multiply 2 and 4. We'll get here 8. So let's add here 8. We are done. Let's calculate the suffix product for this 2, right? So in the next step, we'll move here. Before moving here, we'll calculate the suffix product for 2. Suffix product of 2 is 3 times 4. That is 12. So we have suffix product equals to 12. Now what I'm going to do, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply the prefix product 1 and the suffix product 12. So prefix product of 2 is 1 and the suffix product of 2 is 12. We have here. If we multiply 12 and 1, we'll get here 12. Now we find a 12, right? So we'll move to this element. Before moving to this element, we'll calculate the suffix product for 1. That is 2 times 12, 24. So our suffix product is now 24. So what is the prefix product of 1? Prefix product of 1 is 1. What is the suffix product of 1? That is 24. We have in this variable. So if we multiply 24 and 1, we'll get it 24. This is how we can solve this problem instead creating this new separate array 
when we're when you're inserting the value in this array instead we'll update the value in this array okay prefix product so we'll store our product except self in this array and then we'll return just this array so it it will take time complexity up to when in that case we have to go, we have to iterate the array twice once we have to iterate to create this prefix product array and then we have to iterate from right to left to find out the product except self right so it will take big of n time complexity because we discard the constant part and it will take big of n space complexity for our product except self array this is the optimum solution of this problem in here we saw that we are not using the division operator to solve this problem this is the core intuition of this problem first we find out the prefix product array and we are finding out the suffix product array using a variable and then we are calculating the product except self using the concept of prefix product and suffix product hope you're understanding this is the this is the intuition you need to solve this problem now let's see the algorithm now let's see the algorithm first i'm going to create an array in the prefix product so prefix product in this array we will have the prefix product for every single element and then we'll store the product except self in this array okay so product except self will store in this array so prefix product equals to new int the size of this array is the size of the given array okay and the same size so nums dot length now I'm going to uh, I'm going to construct this prefix product array for that let's insert at the first position of uh, prefix product at the first position we have to insert uh, the value one because for first element uh, for this type of inputs let's take an input here okay for this one on the left we have nothing right so prefix product is one this is the base sketch now let's construct prefix product so we'll iterate from index one because we have inserted already one in our uh, 0th index so i equals to one i less than nums dot length i plus plus now prefix product equals to what I have to do we have to go one step back in our prefix product array so prefix product i minus one times we have to move one step back in our in our given array so nums i minus one this is kind of a dynamic programming approach okay now we have to uh, we have to keep track the suffix product so let's create a variable we can create an array uh, to uh, to keep track suffix product, but uh, but we saw in the picture that will will take extra space. We can reduce the extra space using the suffix product variable. So we have suffix product equals to one because for four on the right we have nothing. So the suffix product of four is one, and this is the base case. Now. We have to iterate this array from right to left so int i equals to nums dot nums dot length minus one while i is greater than or equals to zero i minus minus okay now we, we are, we're gonna store the we're gonna store the product except self in this in this prefix product array so we will not use any extra space it will be space efficient we can create an extra array but we don't need that right so let's store here prefix product prefix product i equals to we have to multiply the we have to multiply whatever value we have in our prefix product table at corresponding positions for four we will have in prefix product uh, we will have six okay and the suffix product we will have uh, in the suffix product we will have one so we don't care whatever value we have here we will just get this value six this is the prefix product and this is the suffix product and we'll update the value in our uh, prefix product with the with the calculated value so prefix product equals to uh, prefix 
prefix product i times suffix product now we have to calculate the suffix product for every single element since we are storing it in a variable when you move to this element we have to calculate it right so when you're done when you we have processed this element we have find out the prefix product uh, we have find out the product except cell for this element so we have to find out the we have to find out the the suffix product for this element so what i can do uh, we can just multiply this number and whatever value we have in our suffix product to calculate suffix product so suffix product equals to suffix product times um nums i okay and here at the end we will return our prefix product array this is the solution to this problem this algorithm will take of two and time complexity you clearly saw that we are iterating two times so it takes two n time complexity and that's equivalent to o of n and it will take o of n space complexity for this prefix product array this is the algorithm now let's run this code okay we have here something wrong okay so what's wrong here uh, it says convert int int cannot be converted to int okay so here we have to um, we have to update the value at corresponding index, right? Uh, it's it's a silly mistake. Now let's run this code. Uh, I think it will work. Okay, it's working. Let's submit it. Yeah, it's one hundred percent faster, and it takes one millisecond. Uh, this is the algorithm to solve this problem. Hope you have understood how to solve this problem. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Welcome back to this video. In this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question maximum summary. In this problem, we are given an array of integers. We have to find out the summary with largest sum. The summary must be contiguous. In this in this array, this is the summary. This is the summary contains the largest sum. 4 plus minus 1 plus 2 plus 1 equals to 6. We have to find out the largest sum of a subarray. So in this problem, if we are given this array of integers, we have to return 6. 6 is the sum of this subarray. So the largest sum we can have from this array is 6. So for this given array of integers, we have to written a 6. Now let's see how to solve this problem. Let's assume we are given this array of integers. Now let's talk about the NAEP solution. In the NAEP solution, we're going to use two nested for loop. Two nested for loop approach will take time complexity of n square using two nested for loop we will generate all possible contiguous subarray we will find out the sum of all possible contiguous subarray sum and we will pick the maximum this approach will take o of n square time complexity o of n square time complexity is not the efficient solution for this problem we have to do something better we can solve this problem in o of in time complexity using two variable let's see how to solve this problem in linear time complexity using two variables initially this is our subarray this is our subarray let's declare here two variable current current equals to minus 2 minus 2 is the first element and max equals to minus 2 current equals to minus 2 means including our current element if we consider this is our subarray including our current element the maximum subarray sum is minus 2 max equals to minus 2 means the maximum subarray sum we have for this portion of this array is minus 2 now let's expand if we expand we get this subarray this is our current element. Let's calculate the value of current and let's calculate the value of max. Current is the 
maximum maximum subarism including current element and max is the maximum subarism in this in this array if we consider this is our array if we include one if we include one uh, first we have to find out uh, in order to find out the maximum subarism including one first we have to find out the subarism the maximum subarism excluding one in this in this subarray including minus two we see minus two is the immediate left of a one we have the maximum subarism including minus two is current which is minus two we have here in this current variable so in order to find out the maximum subarism including one we have to find out the maximum subarism in this portion of this array including the immediate left element which is current minus two so if we add we get one a minus two plus one equals to minus one we get here a minus one and if we do not consider the left if we do not consider the left portion of this one if we select this one standalone then we get one so max of minus one and one is one we'll we'll take the max of minus one and one we get one after computing current we'll take the max of max and a current which is one so let's let's replace minus two with one in this summary if you closely observed including this element one the maximum summary sum is one and in this if we consider this is our array in this array we have the maximum summary sum is one which is this summary for this summary we have only one element now let's expand it if we expand we get minus three now including minus three let's find out the maximum subarism so minus three plus the maximum for this portion including one including one we have in our current variable so if we just add here current this value we get minus three plus one equals to minus two and if we do not if we do not include this current that means the maximum on the left of minus three what we will get we will get minus 3 so here the max is minus 2 so current equals to minus 2 now for max max of max and current so max of minus 2 and 1 is 1 we will have here 1 so for calculating max we will have this formula max equals to max of max and current and in order to compute current we should apply this formula current equals to uh, current equals to max max of our current element if we consider this is the ith element then nums nums i then current plus nums i this is our core logic first we'll compute current then we'll compute this max if you closely observed this subarray in this subarray we have the maximum subarray sum in this array we have the maximum subarray sum is one and including minus three the maximum subarray sum we may have is minus two uh, minus three plus one which is minus two now let's expand it this is our core algorithm now we have here four including four let's compute current so 4 plus current 4 plus current 4 plus minus 2 equals to uh, we get a 2 and if we do not include this current the sum of left the subarray sum of left we get 4 so max of 2 and 4 is 4 so current equals to 4 so max of 4 and 1 is 4 let's update this value with 4 now let's expand this is our current minus 1 so minus one plus four minus one plus this current what do we get we get a three if we consider just this minus one we get minus one max of three and minus one is three so current equals to three max of three and four is um, max of three and four is four so max equals to four let's expand 
Now this is our current element. Let's compute the, the maximum separatism including this A2. Including two, let's let's compute the maximum separatism including two. So two plus whatever the max we have for the left, including on the current we already com we already computed for this separate including this immediate left element so 2 plus 3 equals to 5 and if we do not include we get a 2 so max of 5 and 2 is 5 and max of 5 and 4 is 5 now let's move forward this is our current element now what we're going to do we're going to add this 1 to 5 so 1 plus 5 equals to 6 and if we do not include we get 1 so max of 6 and 1 is a 6 so max of 6 and 5 is a 6 let's move forward we'll apply this same pattern minus uh, minus 5 plus this current 6 equals to 1 if we do not include we get minus 5 so max equals to 1 if we include minus 5 if we include minus 5, the maximum separatism we have 1. So max of 1 and 6 is 6. Max equals to 6. Including minus 5, for this separate, if we try to find out the sum, we will have here a 1 for this separate. For this separate, we will have the sum 1. Now let's move forward. Current element of 4. So 4 plus. 4 plus on the left including minus 5 we already know the answer which is 1 so 4 plus 1 equals to 5 and if we do not include the left the solution for this subarray we get 4 if we consider 4 standalone then we get max of 5 and 4 is 5 and we have here max equals to already 6 so max of 5 and 6 equals to 6 answer equals to 6 we are done we have processed our array and we have this two variable we find it max equals to six that means the maximum subarray or the largest contiguous subarray sum is six we have to return six we scanned this array only once from left to right so the time complexity is o of n and the space complexity is o of one because we use just two variable current and max now let's implement our algorithm int current equals to nums zero it means that the maximum sum including our current element int max equals to nums zero it means that the maximum sum for our current subarray or for our current array now let's iterate from index one int i equals to one i less than nums dot length i plus plus right inside here let's compute current current equals to math dot max standalone our current element so nums i then nums i plus the subarism the subarism on the left of our ith element including the immediate left element which is current after computing current you have to compute max max equals to math dot max max of max and current this is our core algorithm at the end we will return the answer max when we are done with this loop we will have the answer in this max variable this is our algorithm this algorithm will take time complexity of n and it will take space complexity of 1 we are iterating our array or, or we are scanning our array once that's why it will take linear time complexity and we're using two variable that's why it will take constant space complexity now let's submit this code 100 percent faster we have solved this problem successfully if you have any question post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video Welcome back to this video. In this video, we are going to solve this coding interview question maximum product subarray. In this problem, we are given an array of integers. We have to find out maximum product of a contiguous subarray. And we have to return the maximum product. For this given array, this subarray, this entire array contains the maximum product, which is 1 times 2, 
times 3 times 4 1 times 2 equals to 2 times 3 times 4 equals to 12 so 2 times 12 equals to 24 so for this given array we have to return 24 24 is the maximum product of this contiguous subarray we find it maximum contiguous subarray product 24 so we have to return 24 if we are given this array of integers what is the maximum product subarray in this array this is the subarray this subarray contains maximum product this is the contiguous subarray so minus 2 times minus 3 equals to 6 times 4 minus 4 times minus 5 so 20 so here we get 6 times 2 12 so 1 2 0 so for this given array of integers we have to return 120 because in this array this subarray contains the maximum product subarray this is our contiguous subarray this contiguous subarray has this product 120 so we have to return 120 if we are given this array of integers in this array of integers this this subarray contains the maximum product which is minus 2 minus 3 times 4 we see 2 times minus 3 equals to 6 times 4 equals to 24 so for this given array of integers we have to return 24 if we are given this array of integers in this array of integers this is the contiguous subarray which is containing the maximum product which is 2 times 3 equals to 6 we have to return 6 for this given array of integers if we are given this array of integers in this array of integers we see that this contiguous subarray contains maximum product 3 times 5 times minus 1 times minus 2 3 times 5 equals to 15 then minus 1 times minus 2 equals to 2 so we get 30 so for this given array of integers we have to return 30 this is our problem now let's see how to solve this problem now let's see how to solve this problem we are going to use two variable minimum and maximum to solve this problem initially minimum equals to minimum equals to 1 and maximum equals to 1 let's create a variable answer in this variable we are going to store the maximum product subarray the maximum product of a subarray so initially answer equals to the first element which is minus 1 this is the initial value of this variable answer in this problem the minimum length the minimum length of our given array is 1 the minimum length is 1 so we are gonna take minus 1 the first element we're gonna take the first element as the initial value of this variable answer so initially answer equals to minus 1 it means initially the maximum product of a subarray is minus 1 we have here value 1 and here we have value 1 minimum value 1 and maximum value 1 what it tells us it tells us if this is our current element this two variable tells us including the previous element of our current element we have this two variable mean and max the initial value is 1 what it tells us it tells us if this is our current element this minimum and maximum value tells us including our previous element of our current element the minimum product of contiguous subarray is 1 and maximum product of contiguous subarray is 1 so including the previous element this mean and max tells us including the previous element the product of contiguous subarray is 1 the minimum product of contiguous subarray is 1 and the maximum product of contiguous subarray is 1 now let's compute the minimum and maximum for this for this current element including minus 1 we're going to compute the minimum product of a contiguous subarray and including minus 1 we're going to compute the maximum product of a subarray why we need minimum and maximum variable let's assume here we have a negative value 
and here we have a positive value when we are processing this cell we have to find out the maximum product the maximum product of a contiguous subarray so here if we multiply this minus one with this minimum value we will get a positive value if we multiply this value with this positive value we will get a negative value we see that we are getting maximum value by multiplying this minus two with the minimum value that we gained by including minus one the minimum possible product of a contiguous subarray including minus one is this negative value if we get then we multiply with this minus two we'll get the maximum value so we need the minimum value and if we have here a positive value instead if we multiply this two with minus this negative value what will get negative value if we multiply with this what we'll get we'll get a positive value so we get the maximum subarray product for the positive value we don't know what the next value what the next value we have in the next of minus one we don't know it can be negative also it can be positive we have to handle both the cases that's why we need here minimum and maximum now let's compute the minimum product of a contiguous subarray including minus one and maximum product including minus one first let's compute for minimum minimum equals to first this element itself first this element itself it can be something like this if we have here minus 10 here we have minus uh, minus 8 if we multiply minus 1 with minus 10 we get 10 if we multiply with minus 8 we get 8 what is the minimum what is the minimum product including minus 1 we see that which is minus 1 so we have to consider this single element as well so this element itself now let's multiply this value with minimum so what we'll get we'll get minus one times one then we have to multiply this value with this max value then what we will get we will get minus one times one you may ask why we are multiplying this minus one with max we have here minimum value so we can multiply this so we can multiply this value with minimum value we'll get minimum value no this is not the case all the ages if we have here minus negative value let's assume we have here minus 2 and here we have plus 5 so if we multiply with this value minus 1 and minus 2 we get 2 if we multiply with this max value what we get we get minus 5 so in that case we get the minimum value for the maximum value we don't know by which value we are getting the minimum value so we have to multiply with minimum as well as with maximum so we get the minimum value minus one here we have this three minus one minimum of this three we get minus one so including this minus one we get the minimum product subarray the minimum product minus one now let's compute max max equals to max equals to this value this value can be the maximum value because if we have here minus 10 if we have here minus 10 and if we have here 100 instead if we have here 100 then what we'll get 100 then minus 10 times 100 minus 10 times 100 we see that we are getting the maximum value from this value not by multiplying right so we have to consider this as well so this value then we have to multiply with the minimum and maximum to get the maximum value if we have here minimum value if we have here negative value we will get the maximum value by multiplying with the minimum value right so first this value itself our current value then our current value times minimum minimum is minus one here we have one actually this is just for sake of understanding we put here we put it here minus one now minus one times one if we have a positive value if this is a positive value and if this is a negative value then we'll get the maximum value for maximum so we have to consider minimum and maximum we have to multiply this one with minimum as well as with maximum so what do we get so we have to consider minimum and maximum so here we get the maximum value minus one so we get the maximum of this three is minus one 
so including this minus one we get the value minus one and minus one the minimum product is minus one maximum product is minus one as well now we computed maximum value so let's check our answer we see max of minus one and minus one is minus one now let's move forward we have to compute for this cell we have to compute minimum and maximum for this cell minus two let's compute the minimum and maximum in order to compute minimum and maximum here we need the value minimum and maximum value minimum and maximum product we need for our previous cell including our previous cell including our previous element we know that the minimum product is minus one maximum product is minus one so we can find out the minimum and maximum product including this minus two easily right this is kind of a self-explanatory logic now let's compute it so first minimum equals to minus two let's multiply this minus two with minus one minus two times minus one then minus two times minus one what is minimum minimum is minus two so we find out the minimum value here minus two now let's compute maximum so maximum equals to minus two this value itself then minus two times minimum which is minus one then minus two times minus two times minus one we get here two so max is two up until this point we find out the maximum product the maximum product is two so including this current element the maximum product is two and minimum product we get minus two we need minimum and maximum to calculate the product for the next cell we already discussed it so now let's take the max of two and minus one which is two let's update it with two now with the help of minimum and maximum we're going to find out the maximum value including this minus three also we're going to find out the minimum value including this minus three for the next cell we have here minus three if we multiply this with this minus two what we get let's compute minimum minimum equals to minus three now let's multiply with minus two what we get we get minus six three times two equals to uh, six this is plus six then here we get we get three times two which is minus six what is minimum minimum is minus six so the minimum is minus six we need this value to compute the we to compute the value for the next cell if we have here a negative value something like this let's assume we have negative four we have negative four in order to compute the value the maximum product separate for this cell we need this value minimum value so for negative value we need this value minimum value so minus four times minus six what do you get we get 24 we'll see this now let's compute maximum maximum equals to minus three then minus three times minus two which is six then minus three times two which is minus six so max is this minus three times minus two we get six so max we get here six so we get max answer equals to six at this point we see that including this element the maximum product is six minimum product is minus six we solve this problem after solving this summary we have minimum equals to minus six max equals to six it means that from this summary the minimum contiguous summary product is minus six and maximum summary product is six so minimum summary product from this contiguous summary is minus six and maximum is six so the minimum summary product from this contiguous summary is minus six and the maximum summary product of this contiguous summary is six now let's compute the value for the next cell if we have here a value which is negative value so in order to compute minimum here what we have to do minimum equals to minus four then minus four times six equals to 24 then what we get minus 24 so in order to compute the maximum value for this cell we need this minimum value let's see your maximum maximum equals to minus 4 minus 4 times minus 6 which is 24 then minus 4 times 6 which is minus 24 we find it is 24 for this value minimum if we don't have this minimum we cannot compute the maximum value if we have a negative value if we have a positive value 4 then we will get the maximum value for this maximum 
So in that case, what we will get? We will get 4, this value 4 times 6 equals to 24, then minus 24. We will get the maximum value for the maximum value. This is for max. So we need minimum and maximum. We need minimum in order to compute the maximum product subway if we have in the next cell negative value. We need maximum if we have in the negative cell positive value. Now we find out a different value which is 0. If we multiply with 0, all the values becomes 0. So here what we will get? We will get directly 0 here. Minimum 0, maximum 0. So here we recited our minimum and maximum to 0. Now we find out 0 and we get value minimum equals to 0 and max equals to 0. So we solved this summary. By solving this summary, what we get? From this summary, the maximum value we get here 6. The maximum product of contiguous summary, we find out 6. Now we're going to reset it. Now we're going to consider we have only this array. We're considering this is array and our initial value we are going to change. This minimum with 1. We're going to change this minimum to 1 and this max to 1. We're resetting it. We're starting here. Something like we are solving this problem for another examples. We are not curing this part. We already solved this portion. Now let's solve for this portion. This is our value. We we reset it with we reset our value with one one. This is our initial value and this is our first value of our array. Now let's compute our minimum and maximum. In this variable we have the answer for this subarray. Now let's compute minimum. Minimum equals to minimum of 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. So minimum is 3. Minimum is 3 and max. Max equals to 3 times 1. At 3 first then 3 times mean 3. 3 times max is 3. So max equals to 3. Here we have 3. Min equals to 3 and max equals to 3. Now let's check our our answer which is 6. Max is 3. So 6 is greater than uh, 3. Let's move forward. This is our current. So including 3, we already solved including 3. We have 3, mean 3 and max 3. So including 3, the maximum product, 3 minimum product is 3. Now let's solve for 5. We already solved for 3. By including 3, we have minimum and maximum. Now by including 5, including 5, what is minimum? Minimum equals to 5 then 5 times 3 is 15 then again 5 times 3 is 15 here max max equals to 5 15 15 so here the minimum is 5 and here the maximum is 15 so including our 5 we find out the minimum value including our 5 we find out the minimum value this minimum value helps us handling the negative value. If we have the negative value in the next in the next cell, here we find it max equals to 15, including 5. The maximum product sub is 15, so max of 6 and 15 is 15. Let's move forward. Now this is our current. So here let's compute minimum. What is minimum? Including minus 1. So minimum equals to minus 1 minus 1 times 5, which is minus 1 then minus 1 times 15 which is minus 15 now max what is max including our minus 1 so minus 1 then minus 5 then minus 15 so what is minimum minimum is minus 15 so here we get value minus 15 we will use this value to handle negative value if we have on the on the next then here we have max here what is maximum the maximum value is minus 1 so here let's store minus 1 here we are not getting the value by multiplying our current value with minimum value we get from this value itself this value standalone to handle negative value this max value is not helpful to handle negative value this minimum value is helpful now here we get minus 15 and minus 1. So including minus 1. So including minus 1 we get 
minimum value minus 15 and maximum value minus 1. We see max of minus 1 and 15 is 15. Let's move forward. Our next our next element is our next element is minus 2. Now let's compute minimum for this cell. So minimum equals to minus 2. Then minus 2 times 15, which is equals to 30. Then minus 2. Minus 2 times minus 1 is 2. So minimum is minus 2. Here minimum is minus 2. Now let's compute max. Max equals to minus 2, then 30, then 2. Max is 30. So we get here 30. On the next, we have no values. This is our last value. Here we see max equals to 30. So we are going to take the max of answer and max. So we get 30. So answer equals to 30. We solved this problem successfully and we find out this answer 30. So we encountered one important base case. If we encounter zero, what we will do? We will reset our mean and max to one. This is our algorithm. This algorithm takes time complexity O of n. This algorithm takes time complexity O of n. n is the length of the given array. And this algorithm takes space complexity O of 1, which is constant. This is our algorithm. I hope you've understood this algorithm on a very high level. The answer is 30. We find out for this contiguous subarray. We have the answer here, 30. Now let's implement this algorithm using Java programming language. Now let's implement our algorithm. First, let's create a variable answer equals to the first element. Initially, the first element is the maximum product. The maximum product we assume. If we are given an array where we have only one item, so in that case, the maximum product is the first element. We stored initially the first element as the maximum product. Now let's create two variable int min. Min equals to 1 and max equals to 1. So we have this two variable min and max. Min equals to 1 and max equals to 1. Now what we are going to do, we are going to iterate over our array. So int i equals to 0, i less than nums dot length i plus plus. Now we're going to check if our current element, if our current element is equals to 0, then we have to reset this minimum and maximum to 1. So let's reset min equals to 1 and max equals to 1. If our current element is 0, we have to check for input like this, minus 2, 0, minus 1. Also, we have to check here this condition answer equals to this zero can be the maximum product so math dot max answer and zero since here our current element is zero here we can use this nums i here we can use this nums i or we can use here zero and here we can just continue if our current element is not zero then we're going to apply our logic we can use here instead continue we can use here else statement if our current element is not zero then we're going to apply this condition or we can use here continue right here here we can use continue so we can we can remove this else part here we can write out our logic now what we're going to do we're going to store the minimum in our temp variable so temp equals to min now let's compute minimum. Minimum equals to math dot min. First our current element. So nums i. Then what we're going to do? We're going to find out the minimum by multiplying our current element with minimum and maximum. So let's apply here our logic. Nums i times minimum. Then nums i times maximum. We're going to take the minimum of these two. So math dot min let's get the value so here it will gives us the minimum of these three values this value these values and these values it will gives us the minimum so when you're done with this line the minimum variable is updated we store that in our tenth variable now we have to compute max so max equals to math dot max our current element then math dot max nums i here we don't have the minimum value here because you've already updated. So let's use here temp. Then the second value is nums i times max. 
now what we have to do we have to take the maximum of our max and our answer when we are done with this line the max variable is updated with this result with this results now here answer equals to math dot max answer and max this is the logic of our algorithm this is our core algorithm i hope you've understood this video explanation when you're done with this algorithm we are going to return the answer in this answer variable we are storing the maximum product of contiguous survey at the end we're going to return this answer this algorithm takes time complexity o of n which is linear and it takes space complexity o of 1. I hope you've understood this video explanation. This is the tricky ace cases of this problem. I hope you've understood this video explanation. Now let's compile this code. We see it passed two test cases. Now let's submit it. We see accepted. We have solved this problem successfully. If you have any question, you can post your question on the q and forum. Thanks for watching this video. Welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question. Find minimum in a rotated sorted array. In this problem, we're given an array of integers and the array is rotated. This is an array. If we rotate this array six times, then we will get this array so if we rotate this array six times this zero will move right here okay let's draw this so zero will move here then this one will move here then this two will move here let's draw here this two will move here then this three then this three will move here then this four will move here then this five will move here so we will get this array this array is rotated six times if we rotate this array six times we will get this array now how to solve this problem if we're given this array one two three four if we if we're given this array if we repeat if we're given this array one two three four if we rotate this array one times then we'll get two three four one if we rotate this array two times we'll get here a two now we have to solve this problem we can solve this problem pretty easily by scanning this array from left to right by keep tracking the minimum element but that will take of in time complexity we have to solve this problem in logarithmic time complexity when we saw we have to solve this problem in logarithmic time complexity the common algorithm we use binary search algorithm we cannot apply binary search algorithm directly because the array is not completely sorted the binary search algorithm works for sorted array but this array is rotated sorted array we can apply binary search algorithm by modifying so we have to use modified binary search algorithm let's see how to solve this problem using modified binary search algorithm let's assume we're given this array of integers first we'll add us left point to the first element and right pointer to the last element what we're going to do now we're going to find out the middle this is the middle we can find out the middle simply applying this formula left plus right divided by two first let's talk about the base case of this problem if we're given an array of length one then we have to return the element from that array we have only one element if we're given an array of length two we'll return the minimum of two we can do this in constant time and if we're given an array completely sorted if we're given a array that is completely sorted we have to return the first element we can compare that by comparing the first element and the last element if the first element is less than the last element it means the array is completely sorted now let's see how to solve this problem for this type of inputs for this type of inputs we will apply modified binary search let's see how so we have left pointer right pointer and middle pointer now our goal is to find out the decreasing part in this array 
the decreasing part first we're going to try to find the decreasing part at middle plus one and then we'll check middle now what are we going to do we're going to check does the array is decreasing at middle plus one we see no so let's check for middle does this array is decreasing at middle yes it is this array is decreasing here so we find out the decreasing element the decreasing element is our answer the decreasing element is minimum if we find it a decreasing point it means that we find out the minimum so here we see this array is decreasing so this is our answer let's assume that we don't have this part here we don't have this part for this array we have this array so left will point here and right will point here let's calculate the middle the middle will point right here now we see that the array is not decreasing at middle plus one and the array is not decreasing at middle so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna find out the sorted portion we'll have the array is sorted from left to middle or from middle to right we see that this array is sorted for this left to middle so we'll discard this part let's discard it let's move left to middle plus one so left will point here now let's find out the middle middle is zero now let's find out the decreasing part does the array is decreasing at middle plus one right here no then let's check does the array is decreasing at middle yes it is so we find out the decreasing point this is the minimum the minimum is located at decreasing point so this is decreasing point here we have the minimum so we'll return zero we'll first compare middle plus one then middle first we'll check does the array is decreasing at middle plus one then we'll check at middle that's because we might have an array something like this of length two we'll find out this summary by discarding left to right portion so here we'll see left will point here and middle will point here and right will point here if we first compare this middle then we will have index out of bound we have to compare this value with the immediate left value there is no immediate left value if we have two elements then we will have always the decreasing position right here not here okay we'll have always right here because the array is rotated and sorted we'll have something like this two one we'll never have something like this one two when we have left and middle points to the same this is our algorithm to solve this problem let's take another example if we're given this array let's see how to solve it left will point here right will point here let's find it middle this is our middle we see the array is not decreasing here this array is not decreasing here so the array is not decreasing at middle plus one and the array is not decreasing at middle now let's find out the sorted portion this is sorted portion let's discard it so let's move left right here now let's find out the middle this is the middle now we're gonna check does this array is decreasing at middle plus one right here yes it is so this is our answer let's take another example for example if we're given this array left will point here right will point here. let's find out the middle the middle is this middle will point here does this array is decreasing at middle plus one right here no does this array is decreasing at middle no so let's find out the sorted portion or the increasing part this is the increasing part so let's discard this part so right will point here let's find out middle this is the middle now we're gonna check does the array is decreasing at middle plus one yes it is it will decrease right here so this is your answer this is how we can solve this problem this algorithm will takes log of in time complexity so the runtime complexity of this algorithm is logarithmic and it will take constant space complexity because we're not using any additional data structure when you find out an array of length 2 by discarding some part of it we'll have always just answer on the middle plus one because the array is rotated and sorted this is the algorithm to solve this problem efficiently now let's implement this algorithm now let's implement our algorithm first we have to check the base sketch if the length of the array is one then we have to return return nums zero the first element we have only one element if the length is two if nums dot length 
equals to 2 then we have to return the minimum of the 2 so math dot min nums 0 and nums 1 let's put it in one line and if the array is completely sorted we can check that by computing the first and the last so if nums at 0 is less than nums at nums dot length minus 1 then we will return nums 0 these three are the base case if the enter array is sorted we will return whatever we have at the first position now let's create two pointer left and right left will point to the first element and right will point to the last element so nums dot length minus 1 let's run a while loop while left is less than equals to right right inside here let's find out the middle middle equals to left plus right minus left divided by 2 we can apply here this formula left plus right divided by 2 but this mice causes overflow that's why we're using this formula now let's check if the array is decreasing if the array is decreasing at mid plus one also have to check if the array is decreasing at mid if the array is decreasing at mid plus one we have to return the element from mid plus one if the array is decreasing at mid we have to return the mid otherwise we have to discard the sorted part so here if nums mid is greater than nums mid plus one then we will return the value from nums mid plus one if this condition is false then let's check this condition if the array is decreasing at mid so mid minus one if mid minus one is greater than nums mid then we have to return the element from mid so nums mid otherwise we have to discard the sorted part so discard the sorted part or the increasing part now let's find the increasing part we can find it using simple formula if nums left is less than nums mid it means that left to mid is sorted so in this case what i'm gonna do i'm gonna shift left to mid plus one else if this is not true then i'm gonna shift right to mid minus one if this is not true it means that mid to right is sorted so we'll move right to mid minus one this is your algorithm at the end we will return zero this is just for language purposes we will always just have valid input so we'll have answer this will never execute it now let's analyze the time the time complexity will take of log in where it is the length of the given array since we are applying here binary search and this algorithm will take of one space complexity now let's run this algorithm accepted let's submit it accepted we have solved this problem thanks for watching this video welcome back to this video in this video we're going to solve this question search in a rotated sorted array in this problem we're given an array of integers let's assume we're given this array 0 1 2 3 this array is rotated zero times if we rotate this array one times then we will have one two three zero this array is rotated this array is rotated one times if we rotate this array two times then what I will get we'll get two three then zero then one so if we rotate this array two times we'll get this array we rotate this array three times what you'll get we'll get three zero one two so this zero comes here then one then two so three zero one two so if we rotate this array one times we get this array we rotate this array 
two times we get this array if we rotate it then we'll get this array in this problem we are given sorted rotated array okay the array is rotated and sorted we have to find out a target we are given a target let's assume we're given target equals to seven let's assume we're given target equals to seven and this array we have to return the index of our target seven if the target exists if the target does not exist in the array we have to return minus one we see this target exists in this array the index of seven is two so we have to return the index of seven that is two if you are given target equals to eight and this array this array of integers we see target eight does not exist in this array so for this input we have to return minus one because eight does not exist in this array this is the problem now let's see how to solve this problem we can solve this problem pretty easily by scanning the array from left to right we'll compare the target with every single element if we find out eight then we'll return the index if we do not find out eight in the array we'll return minus one that will take off in time complexity this is called linear search algorithm but the constraint to this problem is that we have to solve this problem in a logarithmic time complexity when we have to solve a certain problem in logarithmic time complexity we have to use binary search algorithm for most of the cases we know binary search works only for sorted array but this array is rotated the array is sorted but the array is rotated can we use binary search algorithm to find a target yes we can use binary search algorithm we cannot use binary search algorithm directly but we can use it by modifying so we can solve this problem using modified binary search algorithm now let's see how to solve this problem using modified binary search algorithm let's assume we're given this array of integers and target equals to 4 we have to check does the target exist in the array if target exists we have to return the index of target if target does not exist we have to return minus 1 we see target exist in this array the index of 4 is 8 now let's see how to find out the index of 4 using modified binary search algorithm first let's initialize left pointer to the first element right pointer to the last element now let's find out the middle the middle is 9 plus 0 divided 2 that is 4 so this is our middle now we're gonna check does this middle equals to target no now I'm gonna find out the sorted portion of this array since the array is rotated sorted so we'll have at least one of the part from left to middle or from middle to right is sorted since the array is rotated and sorted so we'll have at least one portion of this array is sorted from left to middle or from middle to right we can check that by comparing the left element and middle element if we saw the left element is less than middle it means left to middle is sorted but we see left is greater than middle so this part is not sorted and here we see this part is sorted 0 is less than 5 so this part is sorted we find out a sorted part now what I'm going to do I'm going to check does this target goes in this range we have minimum in this sorted portion 0 and maximum 5 does 4 goes in this range yes it can goes so let's discard the left portion of this array okay let's move left to middle plus 1 so left will point here now let's find out the middle the middle is this does middle equals to target no now let's find out the sorted part first I will compare this left and middle we see this is sorted this part is also sorted but we will first compare left to middle we see this part is sorted does 4 goes in this range the minimum is 1 the maximum is 3 no 4 does not goes in this range so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna move left to middle plus 1 so left will point right here so let's discard this part now let's find out the middle the middle is this 
9 plus 8 is 17 17 divided 2 is 8 so this is our middle does 4 equals to target yes it is so let's return the index of 4 that is 8 this is how modified binary search algorithm works let's check here different target now let's choose target 8 let's initialize left pointer to the first element and right pointer to the last element let's find out middle this is our middle does middle equals to target no let's find out sorted portion this portion is sorted from mid to right what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna check does 8 fit in this range minimum is 0 maximum is 5 no 8 cannot fit in this range so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna discard this part and i'm gonna shift the right to middle minus 1 so right will point here now let's calculate the middle the middle edge this okay does 7 equals to target no let's find out the sorted portion that is 6 to 7 this is sorted does 8 goes in this range no so let's discard this portion let's move left to middle plus 1 so left will point here let's calculate middle this is our middle and we see that middle equals to target so we'll return the index this two. this is how modified binary search algorithm works we'll keep running our loop while this condition is true left is less than or equals to right if this condition is break and if we do not find out the target we will return minus one now let's take here target 12 we see 12 does not exist in this array let's initialize two pointer left will point to the first right will point to the last let's find it middle this is our middle does zero equals to our target no let's find out sorted portion this portion is sorted and we see target cannot goes in this range so let's discard i'm gonna shift right to mid minus one let's find out middle the middle is this does seven equals to twelve no let's find out sorted portion this is sorted portion and four cannot goes in this range so let's shift left to middle plus one left will point here now this is your middle does eight equals to twelve no let's find out sorted portion from left to right we have only eight the minimum is 8 and maximum is 8 8 and 8 12 cannot goes in this range so let's discard it let's move left to middle plus 1 so left will point here let's find out middle this is our middle now we see that this element is not equals to 12 let's find out the sorted part from left to right so the range would be 9 9 we have only one element if we consider the range then we will have this this range 12 cannot goes in this range right so let's discard this part and let's shift left to middle plus one so left will point here this condition break left less than equals to right so we're done we'll written minus one it means our target does not exist in our given array this is how this algorithm works this modified binary search algorithm will takes log of in time complexity so o of log in time complexity we are dividing the array into two halves each time so the time complexity is logarithmic since we are dividing into two halves so it will take two base logarithm and the space complexity is o of one we have just three variable left right and middle now let's implement our algorithm now let's implement our modified binary search algorithm first we'll have left pointer left will point to the first element at index zero so int right equals to nums dot length minus one right will point to the last element now let's run a while loop while left is less than or equals to right now let's find out the mid mid equals to left plus right minus left divided by two we can use here simply this formula left plus right divided by 2 this might cause this overflow that's why we're using this formula now let's check here middle if nums mid equals to target will return the index of middle element if target is not middle then what i'm gonna do i'm gonna check our sorted portion so if nums left is less than equals to nums mid if this condition is true it means that left to mid part is sorted okay so we find out our sorted portion if left to right 
is sorted then I'm gonna check if target exists in this range so if nums left is less than equals to target less than our mid so nums mid we have already computed mid here so we don't have to use here equal in Java we cannot use condition like this we have to use here this type of condition so we have to check first this then this if this is true it means that target exists from left to middle so in that case I'm gonna shift right to middle minus one otherwise if if our target does not exist in our sorted portion in this portion I'm gonna shift left to middle plus one if our left to mid is not sorted then our mid to right is sorted okay if that's sorted I'm gonna check if our target exists in this range from mid to right so nums mid less than target we don't have to use your equal sign because we have compared the target with the mid and if it's less than equals to nums right and here we have to use target okay now if this condition is true it means that our target exists in this range from mid to right so we have to shift our left to mid plus one otherwise we will shift our right to mid minus one this is our modified binary search algorithm at the end here we will return minus one if this if statement never executed it means that target does not exist in the array so in that case we are returning minus one this is our algorithm the time complexity is of log in this is true base log and it will takes of one space complexity we're dividing the array into two half each time that's why it's take logarithmic time complexity to base log now let's run this code accept it let's submit it accept it we have solved this problem successfully thanks for watching this video welcome back to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question 3 sum in this problem we are given an array of integers let's assume we are given this array of integers if we are given this array of integers we have to find out triplets we have to find out triplets that add to zero that add to zero in this array we have two triplets that add to zero this triplet it add to zero the sum of all the elements of this triplet is zero and sum of this triplet is zero so for this given array of integers we have to return these two triplets for this array of integers we have uh, three triplets these triplets add to uh, zero this triplet add to zero also this triplet add to a uh, zero so we have to return uh, we have to return these are uh, triplets so for this given array of integers we have to return this list for this given array of integers we have to return this list of triplets for sake of understanding let's assume we are given this array of integers first thing what we're going to do we're going to sort the given array of integers if we sort it what we will get minus 4 minus 1 minus 1 0 1 2 if we sort the given array of integers we get this array of integers now let's talk about the NIP solution we can solve this problem in O of n q time complexity we can solve this problem in cubic time complexity using three nested for loop but this is not efficient this solution is not efficient we can solve this problem in O of n square time complexity now let's see how to solve this problem in O of n square time complexity first we sorted our given array now we're going to scan this array one by one from left to right so we can see this is our ith element at the first iteration of our loop this is our first element 
we have a triplets uh, in a triplet we have three position we have three uh, three spot this is if we say a b c the sum equals to the sum equals to zero since we have i at this at this element or i is pointing to this element so we're gonna insert minus four at the first position so b plus c equals to zero minus uh, zero minus a we have a plus b plus c equals to zero a b c a b c are the element so we can say b plus c equals to zero minus a here we have a equals to minus four so zero minus four a zero minus minus four so we get here a four so the sum of these two element sum of the two element is a four so we can see our target target equals to zero minus this element nums nums i this is our target so here we get target equals to a four so we have to find out these two element we have to find out these two element now in the right part or in this portion of this array we have to find out two element that add up to a four if we find out two element that add up to four then we can add the element at this position and at this position then we will find out a triplet since this portion is sorted we can uh, we can use here two pointer left and right pointer we can use here left and right pointer we'll initialize left at the first position uh, at index i plus one and right at the end now let's add this two element we get minus one and two minus one and two something like this nums i nums left actually nums left plus nums nums right if we find out if we find out nums l plus nums r equals to target that means we find out a valid a triplet so we can add the element from index i element from index l element from index r so let's check minus one plus two equals to one one is less than four so what we're going to do we are going to move left to the next element because you have to increase now we see minus one plus two minus one plus two equals to one let's move left right here two plus zero equals to two two is less than four let's move here two plus one equals to three three is less than four let's move here we'll keep moving while this condition is true left less than right we'll keep moving we'll move left or right if we saw the sum of uh, if we saw the sum of the element we have at left and right pointer if we saw the sum is less than then we will move left if we saw sum is greater than we will move right to the left now we see left and right is pointing to the same element so by placing the eighth element at the first position we have no answer we don't have to worry about the duplicates because we have only one element at eighth position so let's move right here now here what we are going to do we're going to check we're going to check does the left of minus one is equals to minus one if we saw on the left of minus one on the left of i if we have the element minus one we'll skip but here we see we have minus four and minus one so they are not the same so we're gonna pick this element at the first in our triplets so let's pick here minus one if we pick a minus one then our target is zero minus minus one or one now from this portion of array we have to find out a uh, we have to find out a pair or two element that add to one left and right left is pointing here right is pointing here minus one plus two equals to one we find out we find out this target here so we find out a valid triplet so we can insert here minus one we can insert here minus one uh, then we can insert here a two so we find out valid triplets minus one minus one and two we'll add this triplet in our answer list so we added here now what we're gonna do we're gonna skip all the element that is minus one here 
we're gonna skip all the element minus one oh uh, here we see we have only we have here zero so let's move left right here let's move right right here if we see multiple two we'll move if we saw here uh, two something like this if we had uh, something like this then what we have to do we have to move r right here we'll take another example to understand this I'll try to understand this algorithm now if we add zero plus two zero plus two what we see we see that if we add this zero plus two c two two is greater than one so we'll move right to the left now we see that 0 plus 1 equals to 1. We find out another target. So we find out another valid triplets. So let's add here. The element at i pointer minus 1. The element at left 0. The element at right 1. So we find out two valid triplets. Now let's move left to the next. R to the left. We see this condition left less than right. This condition is false. So let's move i to the next element we'll move i right here we see that we already choose this element minus one at the first position since this array is sorted if we just compare the immediate left element then we can say we already choose this element minus one so we'll skip we'll move here if we if we move here we have to check here left and right so one plus two equals to three 3 is uh, here first to find out the target let's find out that target target equals to we place here 0 target equals to 0 minus 0 equals to 0 but here we see 1 plus 2 equals to 3 1 plus 2 equals to 3 3 is a uh, greater than so let's move right to the left here we see that our condition left less than right is false so let's move r to the next uh, let's move i to the next i will point here we have here we see that we don't have your three element on the right so we'll do nothing we are done we'll return these triplets this is our algorithm this algorithm will text to sort the array in log in time complexity and in order to uh, in order to apply our algorithm uh, it will text of n square time uh, time complexity for our algorithm so that overall time complexity is O of n log n plus O of n square. If we exclude, if we exclude the output list in the complexity analysis, then the space complexity is O of 1. That means constant. If we do not consider the output list in our answer. For better understanding, let's take one more example. Let's assume we're given this array of integers. We have first sorted the array we have sorted the array we get this array we have three spot in our triplet we have to find out target if we assume this is our ith element then target equals to 0 minus minus 2 so target equals to 2 we have to find out a pair from this portion that add to the target at 2 left we're going to initialize left to i plus 1 right to the end right to the end now let's add this two element we get zero minus two minus two minus two plus two equals to zero zero is less than target so let's move left right here minus one plus two equals to one one is less than target so let's move here minus one plus two one less than target let's move here again let's move here zero plus two zero plus two 2 equals to 2 we find out our target that means we find out a valid triplet let's write out all valid triplets right here so first element the ith element minus 2 then the element at left 0 the element at right so here let's add 2 now let's let's move left right here and right to the left no if we just move here and right here we'll have duplicate answer we have to return all unique triplets since you find out a valid triplets what we're going to do we're going to move left by skipping all duplicates so we have to skip this we have to skip this we have to skip this so left will point here for right we have to skip all the duplicates so let's skip this skip this skip this so right will point here 
we have to use a while loop to move left and right if we have duplicates we see this condition is not uh, true so we are done let's move i to the next now i is pointing to this element minus 2 we see that on the left the immediate left of minus 2 is minus 2 we saw nums i equals to nums i minus 1 if we saw this condition that means we already choose this element we have this element on the left we will check this condition if i equals to 0 or this will be something like this if this condition is true if i equals to 0 or nums i uh, not equals to nums i minus 1 if this condition is true only then we will select the ith element this condition is here false this condition is uh, false so let's move i right here we see on the left of minus 1 we have minus 2 so you can select minus 1 if you select minus 1 target equals to 0 minus minus 1 equals to 1 left here right here minus 1 plus 2 equals to 1 we find out we find out the target 1 so we find out if one valid triplets let's add the triplet right here the ith element minus 1 the element at left pointer minus 1 the element at right pointer now what we're gonna do we're gonna skip all the duplicates this element and this element left is not pointing here let's skip all the duplicates so right is not pointing here let's add this two element 0 and 0 what do we get we get 0 0 is less than a target let's move right let's move left 0 plus 0 less than 1 let's move left here now we see left less than right this condition is false so we're gonna stop let's move i to the next we're gonna move i to the next here before that before that when you saw left and right we are not skipping all the duplicates all the duplicates when you add 0 plus 0 we are skipping only if we saw by adding left and right we find out the target okay now move let's move i to the next we see on the immediate left we have minus 1 so we already choose this at the first position we cannot choose it anymore we cannot choose it anymore now 0 we can choose it on the left we don't have 0 so here we should have we should have this element 0 so 0 minus 0 equals to 0 our target equals to 0 left is pointing here right is pointing here 0 plus 2 greater than target let's move right 0 plus 2 greater than target so let's move here 0 plus 2 greater than target let's move here 0 plus 0 0 we find out a valid triplet we find out the sum of these two is equals to target so if we find out a valid triplet the element at index i the element at index l the element at index r now let's give all the duplicates so it will point here let's keep all the duplicates r will point here we see left less than left less than right this condition is a uh, false so let's move i to the next if we move i here we see we already choose on the left we have zero i on the left we have zero let's move here we can choose it left and right we see we can choose two so here two zero minus two equals to minus two we have to find out a target that is minus two on the on the right by uh, by choosing two element 2 plus 2 equals to 4 that is greater than so let's move r right here now here we see that left less than right this condition is false so nothing to do and here we see that if we move i on the right we have no triplets no possible triplets so we'll move i to the next i to the next if we have enough element on the right if we have enough element on the right so for moving i let's write out here the for loop for i equals to 0 from 0 i less than equals to in minus 3 i plus plus if this condition is true only then we will move i to the next we see that we we see here i less than equals to n here we have length equals to 11 the n equals to the length is 11 so i less than equals to i less than equals to 11 minus 3 which is 8 
so for 8 this condition is true so we will use this for loop this for loop if we so i is pointing here i is pointing here so 9 less than equals to 11 minus 3 equals to 8 so this condition is false we will use this this loop so this is our algorithm we find out this triplets this algorithm will take time complexity O of n log n for the sorting and for our algorithm it will take O of n square. So the overall time complexity is O of n log n plus O of n square. This is our time complexity and the space complexity is constant if we do not consider this output list. This output list also we are not considering the space complexity for our sorting algorithms. Now let's implement our algorithm. First thing what we're going to do, we're going to sort our array. So arrays dot sort nums. Now to store the triplets, we're going to create a list. So list, in this list, all we will have a list. This list for triplets, we'll store the triplet in our list. So we will have integer, list of integer, let's call it list, list equals to new array list. This list will store the, the list of a triplets. Now let's run a for loop for int i equals to zero, i less than equals to nums dot length minus, uh, minus a three. We're subtracting three because for our ith element, if we don't have enough element on the right, we don't have to consider that index. We have to stop at that position. And here i plus plus. Now right inside here, we have to handle the duplicates at the first position or at the ith position. At the ith position, we will not select any duplicate element since our array is sorted. So we can use this simple formula if i equals to zero or if you have enough element on the left, if we have one element on the left, so nums i not equals to nums i minus one. If this condition is true, that means, if this condition is true, that means we are not selecting at our first position the duplicate element. Now inside here, let's find out our target. Let's find out our target. First, let's declare our left and right. So int left equals to, left equals to i plus 1 and right equals to the the index of last element so nums dot length minus 1 now let's find out here target target equals to 0 0 minus 0 minus our ith element so nums i we have to find out two element that add to this a uh, target from index uh, left to right so let's check here while left is less than right while left is less than right now here first thing what we're going to do we're going to add this two element we're going to add this two element so if nums left plus nums right if it equals to our target, it means we find out a triplets. So let's create here our uh, triplets. So list integer, list integer, let's call it triplets equals to new array list. New array list. Now here we have to insert the element from the index i. So triplets dot add nums i ith index then triplets dot add nums left then triplets dot add nums right so we have added our three element our triplets the element to this triplets list now let's add this list to our answer list so list dot add triplets since this is our single triplet, so let's call it triplet and here triplet, 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 uh, let's remove s and let's change this variable name for better naming convention, triplets, we're storing the triplets. So here triplets dot add triplet. 
Now here, what do you have to do? You have to skip all the duplicate. So while uh, let's move here for left pointer. If left less than nums dot length minus one, if this condition is true, and if we saw nums left is equals to nums nums left plus one. If this condition is true, we'll move left to the next. We have to skip the duplicate. Also, we have to skip the duplicate for right. So right greater than zero. If right is greater than zero and nums right equals to nums right minus left, then we have to move right to the left. After this while loop, left will point to the last duplicate. Also, right will point to the last duplicate. So we have to move left to the next. Now left is pointing to the next of duplicate and right minus minus right will point to the now right is pointing to the left of duplicates so by this four line we by this four line we skip all the duplicate for left and right now if we saw the sum of left and right else if nums left plus nums right if we saw the sum of left and right is less than target that means we have to shift left to the next else if this condition is not true and if this condition is not true that means the sum of left and right is greater than target so in that case we have to move right to the left to reduce the the sum of left and right since our array is sorted this is our core algorithm when we are done at the end we will return our triplet triplets in this triplets we have all the uh, triplet all the valid triplet also we have unique and we are checking here for unique at the first position we are not allowing any duplicates and also for the uh, also for our left and right for the second and third position we are not not using not picking or not choosing the duplicates we are skipping the duplicates right here using this for line this is our core algorithm this algorithm will take time complexity o of o of n log n this is for sorting and o of n square for our algorithm for this algorithm and the space complexity is O of 1. We're not considering the space complexity for our sorting algorithm and the space complexity for this triplet list. So this is our time complexity. Now let's run this code. Accepted. Now let's submit it. We have solved this problem successfully. This is our algorithm. And here in this while loop, we're checking if left is less than nums dot length minus one. That means if we have one element on the on the right of left or on the next position of this left pointer. That's why we're checking this condition. If this condition is true, that means we have one element to check. So we are checking here. And same here, if we have one element on the left of right, on the left position of right, then what we're doing, we're moving right to the left. And by checking, by checking this condition. If you have one element on the left and if we saw the left element are equals to the current element for this right pointer we're moving right to the left when we're done with this while loop the left is pointing to the to the last element or to the last duplicates so we have to move one step to the next and same for the right it points to the last duplicate from right to left and we have to move to the left for removing all the duplicates or for skipping all the duplicates. This is our algorithm. I hope you've understood this video explanation. If you have any question, post your question on the Q&A forum. Thanks for watching this video. Welcome back to this video. In this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question container with most water. In this problem, we are given an array of integers. This is the array of integers. Here we have the index number, the index number of the array element. Here we have the array. We see that the array contains integers. The integers represent the line height on a plane. Here we have one. The height of this line is one. Here we have eight. The height of this line is eight. Here we have six. The height of this line is six. Here we have two. The height of this line is two and so on. 
now if we assume a lot of rain water is falling here a lot of rain water is falling here we have to find out a container that contains the most water the maximum water here we see that this is our containers this container stores this container stores the maximum amount of water how we can compute the amount of water we can compute the amount of water here we have this line and we have this line the distance between these two line let's compute the distance between the two line the distance is 8 minus 1 we are subtracting just the index number so we get here 7 we get here 7 and we see the minimum height here is this 7 the minimum height of these two boundary is 7 so we cannot consider this height because if we have water this much then the waters we have above this uh, this level will overflow so we have to consider this minimum level if the distance is 7 if the distance is 7 and if the minimum height is 7 so 7 times 7 7 times 7 equals to 49 so the maximum amount of water this container can contains 49 if we assume this this is contains the maximum water we can realize visually if we have this if we have these containers this container will hold maximum amount of water now if we assume this two line here we will have waters here we may have some more water we visually saw that in this uh, in this empty spot we will not have more water than we have here in between these two right here so we can visually realize that this container will hold the maximum amount of water now let's compute for this two line here we see the height is eight so eight times the distance in between these two is six minus one which is five so five times eight equals to 40 we see that 49 greater than 40 so we have to return 49 now let's see how to solve this problem we can solve this problem easily using two pointer approach we have here our array and we have our index now let's declare two pointer left and right left pointer points to the first element and right pointer points to the last element now first thing what we are going to do we are going to create a variable answer answer equals to zero in this variable we will store the maximum amount of water that we can store now what we are going to do we are going to find out the number of units we have in between these two in between these two line we see that we have total 8 minus right minus left this is index so right minus left equals to 8 minus 0 equals to 8 it means that in between these two boundary we have total 8 units 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 if you look at this box we have total 8 units this is one unit this is one unit so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so we have total 8 units if we subtract the left index from right index we get the number of units we have in between two line so we get 8 now we have to find out the minimum height of left and right boundary here we see the minimum height is 1 the minimum line height is 1 max of 1 and 7 is 1 so in between so in between these two boundary you can store water in this level we can store water up to this level okay up to this level we cannot store water above this level because here we have this boundary it will overflow so the maximum amount of water we can store that is the maximum amount of water we can store that is the number of units we have in between these two boundary and the minimum height the minimum height is one so the minimum height is minimum of seven and one is one so that is eight times it is number of units and the height is one so total eight units of water we can store we see that 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट टोटल एट यूनिट ऑफ वाटर वी कैन स्टोर इफ वी एस्यूम वन इज आवर लेफ्ट बाउंड्री एंड सेवन इज आवर राइट बाउंड्री सो मैक्स ऑफ एट एंड जीरो इज एट सो लेट्स अपडेट दिस वैल्यू विथ एट now we're going to check the value at left and at right we see that this height is less than this height so we're going to keep this height we're going to keep this height and we're going to move the left to the next so left is now pointing here we are moving the left pointer to the next because we may have a height on the next of of this height 1 that is greater than 1 so we can trap more water we can trap more water so we cannot move right to the left if we move right to the left we may find out a wrong answer so let's move left to this line right here now let's find out the number of units we have in between this two boundary which is right index 8 left index 1 equals to 7 and the minimum height of line is 7 and 8 which is 7 so minimum height is 7 so 7 times 7 times 7 equals to 49 max of 49 and 8 equals to 49 we see that we have here total we have here total 49 we have total 49 unit 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 here you have 7 unit and in this direction in in this vertical direction we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 Seven. So we have seven units. So seven times seven equals to forty-nine. Here we have total forty-nine units. So we can store forty-nine units of water, which is far greater than eight. So up until this point, our max answer is forty-nine. Now we see that this line height is greater than this line height. So let's move out to the left. We may find out. a container where you can store more water if this is a boundary if our boundary is bigger so this boundary is bigger than this boundary so we have moved our right to the left here we see that the distance in between this two is 7 minus 1 7 minus 1 equals to 6 times the minimum height is 3 so 3 times 6 equals to 18 which is less than 49 so we're not going to update it let's move r to the left since r uh, this pointer is pointing to the line which is less than this height so now r is pointing here now let's find out the number of units we have in between two uh, boundary so r minus left 6 minus 1 equals to 5 5 times the minimum height is 8 so minimum of 8 and 8 is 8 Five times eight equals to forty. So, max of forty and forty-nine. Max of forty and forty-nine is forty-nine. Now, what we are going to do? We can move left to the next or right to the left. Since we see the both are the same. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to move our right pointer to the left. We are going to move right pointer to the left. If we saw. If we saw this condition H L value at left is less than value at right. If we saw this condition, only then we will move left to the next. Otherwise, we're gonna move else. We're gonna move right to the left. You can use your own logic if you find out two boundary are the same. The both will works if you move this left to the next instead right to the left. it will works as well without an issue let's find out the number of units we have in between this two boundary which is 5 minus 1 equals to 4 minimum height is 4 so 4 times 4 equals to 16 16 is less than 49 let's move out to the left since this height is less than this height r is point here now we see that here we have index 4 4 minus 1 equals to 3 3 times minimum is 5 so 15 which is less than 49 let's move here we see that 3 minus 1 equals to 2 times 2 equals to 4 which is less than 49 let's move r to the left r is now pointing here we see that 2 minus 1 equals to 1 times minimum is 6 so 6 6 is less than 49 now let's move r to the left now we see r and 
R and L is pointing to the same element. If we saw this condition, left is less than right. If, if we saw this condition is false, we'll stop. We'll return this value. This is our answer. This is our algorithm. For the worst case, this algorithm will take time complexity O of n, where n is the number of number of elements we have in the given array. Or we can say n is the length of the given array and it will take a space complexity O of 1 because we are not using any additional data structure to solve this problem. I hope you have understood this video explanation on a very high level. Now let's implement this algorithm. Now let's implement our algorithm. First let's create our two pointer left and right. Left will point to the first element and right will point to the last element. So height dot length minus 1. Left will point to the first element and right will point to the last element. Let's create here a variable int answer int answer equals to 0. In this variable we will store the maximum amount of water we can store in our container. Now let's run a while loop while left is less than right. Right inside here let's find out the minimum height from left and right boundary. So int min equals to math dot min height left and height right. Here we are finding out the minimum height. Right below here, what we are going to do? We are going to find out total total amount of water we can store, which is minimum times, which is minimum times right minus left, which is minimum times right minus left. This is the total number of water we can store in our current container. So we're gonna take the max value answer equals to math dot max math dot max answer whatever we have then mean times right minus left right minus left is the number of units we have in between our two boundary now we're gonna check if we saw height height left if we saw the height of left boundary is less than the right boundary if we saw this condition we're gonna move left to the next else if we saw left boundary is greater than or equals to right boundary then we're gonna move right boundary to the left this is our core algorithm at the end we're gonna return our answer this algorithm takes time complexity o of n where n is the length of the given array and it takes a space complexity o of one i hope you've understood this video explanation now let's compile this code it passed two test cases now let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully. If you have any question, you can post your question on the q &A forum. Thanks for watching this video. Welcome back to this video. In this video, we are going to solve this coding interview question, sum of two integers. In this problem, we are given two integer a and b. We have to add two integer and we have to return the summation of the two given integer. But in this problem, we cannot use arithmetic operator. We cannot use addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or module operator. We cannot use any arithmetic operator. We have to add two numbers. If we add these two numbers, what we will get? We will get 19. So for a equals to 5 and b equals to 14, we have to return 19. If we are given a equals to 37, b equals to 62, we have to return 99. If we are given a equals to minus 20, b equals to minus 30, we have to return minus 50. If we add these two negative numbers, we get this number minus 50. If we add these two numbers, this is positive and this is negative, we have to return 9. If we add these two numbers, we get the number 9. And if we add these two numbers, what we get? We get the number minus 9. So for this input, we have to return 19. For this input, we have to return 99. For this input, we have to return minus 50. For this input, we have to return 9. And for this input, we have to return minus 9. In this problem, we are given two integer a and b. We have to add that two integer without addition subtraction multiplication division modulus operator 
we cannot use any arithmetic operator to add two numbers. We can solve this problem using bitwise operator. Now let's see how to solve this problem. For examples, if you're given 5 and if you're given 14, we have to add these two numbers. If we add, we get 19. For visualization purposes, we are assuming that we are dealing with an environment where we have 8 bits for an integers. We have 8 bits for an integer. Actually, we have 32 bits for integers. For visualization purposes, we are going to use 8 bits. Here we have this number 5. If we represent this number 5 in binary, we get this binary number. If we represent this number in binary representation, we get this binary number. If we add this to binary number, we get this binary number, which is equivalent to 19. So we have to return 19. We can add two binary number using bitwise operator. We will see how to add to binary number using bitwise operator without arithmetic operator. If we are given this input, this is the representation of 37, this is the representation of 62. If we add this to binary number, we get 99. We'll add this to binary number using bitwise operator without arithmetic operator. So for this input 37 and 62, we have to return 99. If we are given 22 and minus 13, we have to return 9. This is the representation of 22. This is the representation of number 13. Computer don't know positive and negative numbers. Computer do not store in the RAM the negative or positive number. If a number is positive, the leftmost bit, this is the sign bit, the leftmost bit is called the sign bit, the sign bit is 0. If we have here 1, it means that the number is negative. We have here positive, so this number is positive. This is the representation of 13. This is not minus 13. The two's complement of this 13 is this. Computer stores this number in the RAM. When it reads this number, when it saw the leftmost bit or sign bit is 1, it's written negative number. Because if we have here 1, it means this number is negative. How to find out the value of this 2's complement? The value of 2's complement in order to find out the values of 2's complement, if we find out the 2's complement of this, the 2's complement of this 2's complement, we will find out the value 13. Since we have here 1, so it will add one sign here that is negative symbol. So if we are given a negative integers, first it's convert it into 2's complement. This is the 2's complement and this is our number 22. If we add this 2 number, we get this binary number. Here we see we have overflow since we are dealing with an environment where we have 8 bits. So this is overflowing. So it's removed from our binary representation. Now we're going to find out the value of this binary number. Since we have the leftmost bit 0, so this is a positive number. And the value of this is 9. 1, 2, 4, 8. 8 plus 1, 9. So this number is 9. So we have to return 9. If you're given these two number minus 22 and 13, this is the representation of 22. This is the two's complement of this 22. We're storing this 22 because we have to store negative numbers. And we have 13. If we add these two number, we get this. We get this number. We see that here we have negative value. It means that this number is negative. So we're gonna find out the two's complement of this number. This is the two's complement. So the value of this number is nine. We have here set bit 1. This bit is 1. So we are going to return minus 9. The value of this is 9 and it will add negative symbol in front of this number because we have here this bit, this leftmost bit 1. So we will return minus 9. If you are given two numbers, the both number are negative. First, we find out the binary equivalent of 22. Then we find out 2's complement. For 13, we find out the binary equivalent for 13, then we find out the 2's complement. Now we're going to add this 2's complement. If we add this 2's complement, we find out this number. We see this is overflowing, so it's removed from our binary representation. This is the leftmost bit. In order to find out the value of this, we have to find out 2's complement of this. This is the 2's complement. The value of this 2's complement is 35. 35, we see that 
वन टू फोर एट सिक्सटीन थार्टी टू सो थार्टी टू प्लस टू प्लस वन इक्वल्स टू थार्टी फाइव सिंस वी हैव दिस लेफ्ट मोस्ट बीट इज वन सो वी हैव टू एड नेगेटिव सिम्बल सो वी गेट दिस नंबर माइनस थार्टी फाइव वी हैव टू रिटर्न माइनस थार्टी फाइव सो इन दिस प्रॉब्लम इफ यू आर गिवेन नेगेटिव नंबर फर्स्ट वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट टू इज कॉम्प्लीमेंट देन वी विल एप्लाई द लॉजिक विथ द टू इज कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ द नेगेटिव नंबर now let's see how to solve this problem this is our first example we have 5 and 14 we have this two positive number this is 5 and this is 14 in order to add this two number 5 and 14 this is our first example we have this two number 5 and 14 in order to add two number we can use addition operator right but in this problem we cannot use arithmetic operator so we have to solve this problem using bitwise operator to solve this problem we are going to use bitwise exor operation bitwise and operation and bitwise left shift operator so to solve this problem we are going to use three bitwise operator exor and and left shift the exor operation in between to same digit to same digit it's written zero if the both digit are opposite it written one and if the both digit are zero then it will written zero so the exor operations in between two same digit zero in between different digit one now let's see how to solve this problem using this three bitwise operator first thing what we're going to do we're going to find out carry we're going to create a variable let's call it carry in our carry what we are going to do we are going to we're going to made bitwise and operation in between a and b this is a and this is b if we made here bitwise and operation in between this two binary number what we get at this position we will get zero at this position we get zero at this position we get one at this position we get zero and here we get zero we find out this carry we get this carry by applying bitwise and operation in between this two number now what we're going to do we are going to find out the exor of this two number so what is the exor of this two digit that is one because these two digit are different so here what we get we get one here what we get if the both digit are the same here we get 0 here what we get we get 1 here we get 0 here we get 0 here we get 0 here we get 0 now we are going to update our number a with this exor value with this value that we get by applying bitwise bitwise exor operation in between two number a and b so we find out our carry and we find out this value this binary number a by applying bitwise exor in between these two number a and b so we get this carry and we get this a here a equals to a exor b and here carry equals to a and b here we see that for binary addition we have here one we have here one but for binary addition we know that one and one so we have to evaluate zero and we have to keep a carry for this position right for this position we have to keep a carry then what we have to do we have to add this two if we add this two we get one and zero we get a one here we have to add the carry that we have here so how to add the carry here we stored the carry we stored the carry that we get by adding this two by adding this two we get a carry one we have to add this carry one right here so now what are going to do we're going to do left shift if we do left shift so it will move here then if we add this two number then if we add this two number we will get the answer right we will get the addition of this two number a and b so what we're going to do now we're going to left shift our carry and we're going to store that in b so 
B equals to left shift carry to left shift. This zero moves here. This zero moves here. This one moves here, and so on. So this one moves here, and the rest of the cell are zero. Here we have empty since we left shift. So this empty spot will be filled with zero. So at this point, we find out A and B. Now if we add this to binary number, this carry will be added to the correct position since we left shifted by one position and we stored in this variable b so we find out this carry using this operation in between a and b we find out a by by making this operation a xor b we find out b by left shifting carry so carry equals to left shift left shift one we left shifted by one position so we left shifted by one position in this carry and we stored it in this variable now let's move forward this is our first step now our second step let's find out carry in between this a and b in order to add this two binary number in order to add this two binary number first thing we're going to find out the carry so carry equals to one zero here we get zero 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 here we get one we will get carry if we add this two number we have a carry right that is one so here we get zero 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 now let's compute exit operation so a equals to exit in between these two so if we add this number so what do you get zero and one if we add if we apply here bitwise addition so we get one here we get one here we get zero here what we will get we will get zero and we have a carry that we have to add we will have a carry here so we get value zero and we have a carry and we have to add that carry by adding this two number since we are just finding out the XOR and we already stored this carry in this carry variable here we have the carry so we can move this one to the left then we can add this carry to the perfect position so here we will get 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 we see that we have a carry here we have to add the carry that we get here we get here some zero now we have to add this one at this position we have to add this one at this position so what we're going to do we're going to left shift so it will move in its perfect position where we have to add this one so b equals two we have to do left shift so what we get after left shifting we get here one then zero 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 if we do left shift this is empty this become empty and let's fill it with zero this is our second step now let's move forward first let's find out the carry so carry equals to carry equals to here in between these two number a and b here we get zero 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 here we get zero 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 if we add one and zero we have no carry if we add one zero we have no carry if we add this to binary digit zero zero we have no carry if we add this we have no carry if we add this two we have no carry we see that now our carry is zero now what we're going to do we're going to add this two number and let's store that in variable a so a equals to a equals to let's add this two number we get here one we get here one zero zero one zero 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 let's find out b let's shift all the carry to the perfect position where we have to add that carry if we left shift we will get this number we'll get this digit or digit will one digit will overflow here we have empty so it will be filled with zero now i see b is empty it means that we have no carry so we have added the two number a and b successfully we stored that in this variable a so we're going to return the integer that represent this binary number so here one two four eight sixteen so sixteen plus two eighteen plus one equals to nineteen so if we add this two number we get this binary we get this binary number which is which is nineteen so we're going to return nineteen or this a this is our algorithm we have here just three step one step two step and three step in three step we find out our answer this is how we can solve this problem this algorithm takes time complexity O of 32 and it takes space complexity constant. 32 is constant, so the time complexity is 
constant. This is the complexity of this algorithm. For better understanding, let's take another example. For example, we are given these two integers 37 and 62. First, let's find out the carry. Carry equals to. If we add these two digit, we get carry 0. We have no carry. If we add these two, we have carry 0. If we add these two, we have carry 1. If we add this 2, we have carry 0. If we add this 2, we have carry 0. If we add this 2, we have carry 1. And we have 0 for the left. We find out carry. Now let's find out A. So we find out carry by doing bitwise and operation in between A and B. This is A and this is B. Now let's find out A. We can find out this A using bitwise exit operation in between A and B. So let's apply here bitwise exit. So what we get here? We get here 1. 1 we get here 0 we see that by adding this 2 digit we get 0 and we have a carry and we have carry here we stored carry here we have to add the carry by adding this 2 number we have to add this carry by adding this 2 number by adding this 2 number we get 1 we have to add carry to this 1 but now what we are doing we are just keep tracking the carry we are keep tracking the carry we will add the carry later so here what we will get so here what we will get we will get here 1 we have to add this carry right here at this position so if we add this one right here we will get the correct answer we will we'll add this here by left shifting okay now let's find out the exit operation if we find out exit in between 0 and 1 we get 1 the exit in between this 2 we get 0 since the both number are the same we have a carry here right and we have carry we we stored here in this carry in this binary number we have to left shift and we have to add carry to the left so if we add so if we apply binary XOR so we get here 0 so we have to add this carry right here so we have to shift here this one and we have to shift here this one and here we get 0 now if we do left shift and if we add this two number if we left shift this by one position and, and if we add this two number then the carry will be added at the perfect position right so what we're going to do we're going to update our b by left shifting this carry to the left so what we'll get we'll get here one we'll get here one and the rest of the bit are zero and we'll have here zero overflow this empty position will be filled with zero now if we add this two number the carry will be added at the perfect position right so this is our first step now let's apply our second step we get this b by doing left shifting carry left shift left shift equals to one by left shifting this carry we get we get this b now our second operation in our second operation first what we're going to do we're going to find out carry we're going to find out our carry okay this is our second operation or you can say this is our second iteration this is our first iteration we have to do this in our first iteration this is our first operation or you can say this is our first iteration this is our second operation or you can say this is our second iteration we have to do this in our first iteration so in this iteration first let's calculate the carry if we add this two number we have no carry if we add this two we have no carry if we add this two we have no carry if we add this we have a carry so let's store here one if we add this we have carry zero we have carry zero 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 now let's find out XOR in between these two number. What do we get? We get here 1, 1, 0. We get here 0. Here we get 1. We have to add this carry. We have to add this carry with this binary digit. Right? So we have to left shift. If we left shift here and if we add this two binary number, the carry will be added at the perfect position. Now we have here 0. Here we have 1. Here we have 0. Now let's left shift our carry. So if we left shift, we'll get this one right here. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Here actually 0, 0. Now let's move forward. This is our second operation. Let's move to third operation. Now our third operation, first let's compute our carry. So carry equals to, if we add this two digit, we get carry 0. Carry 0, carry 0, carry 0. Here we get carry 1. Carry 0 carry 0 carry 0 now let's compute a so here we get 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 
now we have to add this carry right we have to add this carry we see that when we add this two number when you add this two number we have a carry that is one you have to add one with this with this sum right with this sum so here sum is zero so we have to add this carry right here we have only one carry here so we can move here so let let shift let shift our carry so zero zero here we get one zero 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 now let's compute carry here let's compute carry so carry equals to if you add this two digit carry is zero if you add this two, di two digit carry is zero here carry is zero carry is zero 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 we find that carry equals to zero now let's compute a a equals to now if we apply exit operation we get here one one zero 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 one one zero we get this binary number now let's do left shift in our carry we do left shift what do we get we get zero 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 we see our b equals to zero so we added two number a and b successfully this is the sum this is the binary this is the binary representation of the sum of 32 and 62 so 1 plus 2 plus 4 8 16 32 32 plus 64 if we add this 3 we get 35 35 plus 64 equals to 4 plus 5 equals to 9 6 and 3 9 so 9 9 we get the answer 9 9 so this a is equivalent to 9 9 we will return we will return the a we will stop our algorithm when we see b equals to 0 and we will return our a a is 99 for this two given integer so 99 is the answer for two integer 37 and 62 this algorithm takes time complexity of 32 for the worst case we need 32 operations which is equivalent to o of 1 constant and it takes a space complexity o of 1 now let's see the pseudocode now let's see the pseudocode let's call a function sum of two number this is our function sum of two number a and b this is our function in this function we have two parameter a and b we received two integer a and b now what we have to do we have to run a while loop while b is not equals to zero right inside here what we are going to do we are going to compute first the carry so carry equals to a and b we store the carry and carry so now a equals to a xor b and b equals to we're going to left shift to this carry so carry carry left shift by one position this is our algorithm the implementation is easy at the end we're going to return we're going to return a when b equals to zero it means that we have added two number and we stored the summation in a so we're going to return here a this is our algorithm for the worst case it takes time complexity o of 32 which is constant the space complexity is also constant now let's implement this algorithm using java programming language now let's implement our algorithm the implementation is easy first our while if while b is not equals to zero while b is not equals to zero inside here we're going to compute carry carry equals to a and b where we're finding out the carry okay using this and operator now we're going to store by making between xor operation in between these two integer a and b so a xor b now we're going to left shift carry and we're going to store it in b so carry left shift one so we're left shifting this carry by one position and we're storing it b and we're running this loop again we are making this operation again and again until b is not equal to zero if b is equal to zero that means we find out our answer we have the answer in the variable a this is our algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity of 32 which is constant and space complexity also constant i hope you've understood this video explanation now let's compile this code we see it passed to sample test cases now let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully 
If you guys have any question, post your question on the Q&A forum. Thanks for watching this video. In this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question number of one bits. In this problem, we are given an integer n. We have to find out the number of one bits we have in the binary representation of the given integer. For example, if we are given n equals to 11, the binary representation of 11 is this binary number. We know that integer takes 32 bits. Integer takes 32 bits. Here we have total 32 bits. The binary representation of 11 is this binary number. Now we have to find out number of 1 bits in this binary number. Here we see that we have total 3 1 bits in this binary representation. So for n equals to 11, we have to return 3. For example, if you are given n equals to 4105, the binary representation of this number is this binary number. In this binary number, we see we have total 3 1 bits. So 1, 1 and 1. We have to return for n equals to 4105. We have to return 3. Now let's see how to solve this problem. For example, we have n equals to 11. The binary representation of 11 is this binary number. Now we have to find out the number of 1 bits we have in this binary representation. Here we have total 32 bits. Now we are going to create a variable count. Let's create a variable count. Initially count equals to 0. Now we are going to check every single bit value from right to left. This is our current bit. Here we have value 1. So we are going to increase our count. So we get count equals to 1. Then here we have 1, so let's increase this count, we get 2. Here we have 0, so for 0, we cannot increase the count. Then on the left, we have 1. So we're going to increase the count from 2 to 3. And all the value on the left, we see that is 0. So if we check all the value on the left, we get the value 0. So we can't increase count for all the value we have on the left. So when we're done with this binary number, we get the value, we get the value 3, we're going to return 3. That means we have total 3, three ones in this binary number. Now how we can check the value at a specific bit? For sake of understanding, if we want to check this value, the value at this position, how we can check that? In order to check that, we are going to take here 1 at this corresponding position and all the value on the right we are going to take 0 all the value on the left we are going to take 0 and if we apply bitwise and operation in between our number and by taking this number what we get? we get 0 0 0 0 0 we know that bitwise and operation return 1 if we have both bit 1 Otherwise, it's written 0. So, we find out here 0. All the value 0. So, it means that if we apply bitwise and operation, if we have the bit value 1 at that corresponding position, we will get non-zero value. If we get 0 value, that means the bit is not set. That means at that specific bit, we have value 0. Now, if we want to check the value at this bit. How we can check that? In order to check that, we are going to take here a number 1. All the value on the right, we are going to take 0. All the value on the left, we are going to take 0. So what we get if we apply bitwise and operation? We get 0, 0. Bitwise and between 1 and 0 is 0. So here 0, 0, here 1. And all the value on the left, we get 0. We see that this is non-zero value. This is not 0. So at this bit at this bit we have the value 1 now how we can check every single bit every single bit value in order to check every single bit value we are going to take a variable mask equals to 1 so this value represents in binary first 1 then all the value on the left of 1 we have 0 now if we apply bitwise and operation in between these two number what we get so we're going to apply bitwise and operation in between n and mask. 
if we get non zero value that means the bit at this position the bit value at this position is 1 if this condition is true we're going to increase we're going to increase the value of our count variable we see this is non zero value so we're going to we're going to increase the count so we get count equals to 1 now let's move 1 at this position 1 by 1 so here we get a 1 we're left shifting 1 by one position in order to move one to the left we can use this left shift this is left shift bitwise operator if we apply this logic mask equals to mask left shift one this is left shift bitwise left shift operator if we apply this formula we will get this value one here now if we apply bitwise and operation we get non-zero value 1 0 and all the value on the left is 0 so we get non zero value so we can increase this count from 1 to 2 now let's move this one to the left so one will point here moving one to the left means that we are multiplying our decimal number by 2 we are multiplying our decimal number by 2 so one is pointing here it means we multiplied 1 by 2 so mask equals to 2 now let's move one at this position so 1 0 if we apply bitwise and operation we get 0 0 0 0 we get the value 0 so at this position at this position we have value 0 let's move 1 to the left when 1 is pointing here mask equals to 4 so if we move 1 here that means this binary number is 8 if we multiply 4 by 2 we get 8 if we apply here bitwise and operation we get 0 1 0 0 1 we see we have here 1 so the value of this binary number is not 0 the decimal value of this binary number is not 0 so let's increase count we get count equals to 3 now let's move 1 to the left now 1 is pointing here so mask equals to 16 now so we get this binary number 0 0 0 0 the decimal equivalent is 0 so we can't increase this count because at this position we don't have the value 1 at this position if we move 1 to the left 1 by 1 by processing all the values on the left we will have count equals to a 3 so the total number of 1 bits is 3 we're going to return 3 this is how we can solve this problem first let's create a variable count count equals to initial 0 now let's run in loop for int i equals to 0 i less than 32 i plus plus right inside here let's create a variable mask mask equals to 1 left shift i now if we saw if in if in bitwise and operator mask if it evaluates non-zero value then we're going to increase the value of our variable count at the end when you're done with all of we're gonna rate and count. This is our algorithm. This algorithm takes time complexity O of 32, which is equivalent to O of 1, and it takes space complexity O of 1. Now let's run this code. We see accepted, let's submit it. Accepted. We have solved this problem successfully. I hope you have understood this video explanation. If you have any question, you can post your question on the QA forum. Thanks for watching this video. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to solve this coding interview question counting bits. In this problem, we are given an integer n. We have to return an array answer of length n plus 1. Such that for is i, 0 less than equals to i less than equals to n. For is i, answer i is the number of 1s in the, in the binary representation of i. So in this problem, we are given an integer, we are given an integer, we have to create an array of length n plus 1. If we are given n equals to n equals to 3, we have to create an array of length 4, which is n plus 1. Let's create here an array of length n plus 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3, this is our array. In this array, we have to find out the number of 1 bits we have in the binary representation of 0. The binary representation of 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0. So, in the binary representation, so in the binary representation of 0, we have no 1 bits. So, 0. 
in the binary representation of one we have one one bits so here one in the binary representation of two we have one one bits so we have to insert here one in the binary representation of three we have two one bits we have two one bits so we have to insert here two so for n equals to three we have to return this array for example if we are given n equals to two we have to create an array of length two plus one which is three this is our array now this is index zero index one index two in the binary representation of zero we see there is no one so zero one in the binary representation of one we have one one so here we have one in the binary representation of this two we have one one so we have here one so we have to return this array if we are given n equals to five we have to create an array of length six so this is our array zero one two three four five in the binary representation of zero we have zero one in the binary representation of one we have one one we have here one in the binary representation of two we have one one so we have here one in the binary representation of three we have two one so we have here two in the binary representation of four we have one one so we have one in the binary representation of five we have two one so we have here two so if we are given n equals to five we have to return this array of integers now let's see how to solve this problem for example if we are given n equals to 5 we are going to create an array of length n plus 1 we have to find out number of ones we have for all the number we have in between from 0 to 5 here we have number from 0 to 5 how we can solve this problem we can call a function count count bits we can call a function and here we can provide our number if we iterate over this number this index i from 0 to n we have to call our function n plus one times and in the function we are checking every single bit that will takes 32 32 operations always so the time complexity would be in that case the time complexity would be the n the given integer n times 32 this is the nap solution we have to solve this problem in single patch without iterating over the bit of every single integers we have to solve this problem in single patch by just iterating over the number from 0 to n in o of n time complexity without calling our function n times without calling our count with function n times let's see how to solve this problem efficiently we have here some binary number and here we have some decimal number we have the binary representation of the decimal number here we have zero the binary representation of zero is this the binary representation of one is this and so on for example let's assume we are given n equals to eight so we have to find out the number of ones we have in the binary representation of the number we have from zero to eight we have to find out the number of ones we have in all the numbers we have from zero to this number eight let's create here an array of size n plus one so we have index number zero one two three up to eight at this position we're gonna find out the number of ones we have in the representation of zero and we'll store that here for this one we will find out the number of ones in the representation in the binary representation of one and we'll store here we'll find out the number of one bits we have in the binary representation of two and we'll store here and so on this is our first number zero in the binary representation of this number zero we see there is no one bits so we're gonna insert here zero this is our base case now let's investigate the nature of a binary number if we want to find out the binary number of the decimal five we have to set here one and here one rest of the bit r0 if we add this four and one we will get this number five so this is the binary representation 
of this number 5 now for the number for the number 1 2 4 8 16 32 if you look at here number 1 2 4 then 8 then 16 if you look at the binary representation of 1 2 4 8 16 and 32 we see that for all this number we have only one one bits in the binary representation of these numbers so if we find out a number is power of 2 this is true to the power 0 this is true to the power 1 this is true to the power 2 this is true to the power 3 this is true to the power 4 this is true to the power 5 so if we find out a number that is power of 2 in their binary representation we have only one bits we need this concept to solve this problem now let's find out the number of one bits we have for this number one we know that if we find out a number that is power of two we have one bits in the binary representation so how we can check that a number is power of two or not in order to do that we are going to use a variable offset initially offset equals to one this is our initial value of this offset variable we will apply some logic in this offset variable to change the value of this variable such that if we subtract the offset from our current from our current number if, yes. if we declare here a pointer that is i so our current value is one if we subtract offset from our current value offset offset if, if we find out by subtracting offset from our current value if we find out offset equals to zero if you find it offset equals to zero it means that our current value is power of two we will maintain some properties to change this to change this value such that if we subtract offset from our current number if we saw we get zero i minus offset equals to zero it means our current number is power of two we see that here i minus offset equals to zero it means that our current number is our current number is power of 2 so if this condition is true what we are going to do we are going to apply this logic dpi we're going to name this table dp dynamic programming table this is kind of a dynamic programming concept dpi equals to 1 plus dp i minus offset if we find out this i minus offset equals to zero it means that our current number is power of two so one we have only one bits in that number plus dp i minus offset this is zero so we will get this value zero so we will have the value one here similarly when we move here if we apply i minus offset we will get zero so if we apply this formula dpi equals to 1 plus dpi minus offset we will get here the value 1 now let's see how now let's find out the value for this so if we subtract this offset from this value we get 0 so here we have to insert 1 if we apply this formula we will get here the value 1 this is our default value first we're gonna check this condition if we saw offset offset times 2 equals to i if we saw offset times 2 equals to i then what we are going to do we are going to multiply multiply our offset by 2 so in this variable we will store always the value that is power of 2 if we apply this logic always and if we find out i minus offset equals to 0 that means the number i is power of 2 now let's move forward here we have 2 now we're gonna check first the offset 2 times offset equals to this current value so we're gonna change this offset to 2 now we see that this is power of 2 so we're gonna insert here 1 if we apply this formula we'll get we'll get this value here 1 now let's compute the value for 3 for 3 we see that we have 2 1 now first let's find out the next number of this power of 2 the next number is 3 
the number we have in the next up to is 3 that is not power of 2 if so we represent the 2 in binary representation we get 0 1 0 0 0 we see at this position we have 1 so in order to represent this value 3 we must have at the corresponding position 1 so we we must have 1 bits so we have to find out the number of 1 we have in the representation of 2 how we can find out that so dp offset dp offset from this offset we can find out that here we are storing the maximum power of 2 maximum power of 2 we have before this number 3 so we have here 1 plus if we subtract this number 2 from 3 what we will left with if we subtract this if we subtract this number 2 from 3 what we will left with we will left with 1 we see that we have 1 right here if we subtract what we get we get the number 1 now we are going to find out the number of 1's we have for the number 1 how we can find out that using this formula dp our current number i minus i minus we have to subtract our offset that is 2 so offset so we find out this number and this number and we see that if we add this two number we get this number so we find out the number of ones we have in the representation of 3 that is dp offset plus dp i minus offset that is 1 plus 1 which is 2 so here let's insert 2 if you don't understand it don't worry let's move forward our next number is 4 let's multiply this offset by 2 we get 4 so it means that i minus offset i minus offset equals to 0 now offset become 4 because 2 times 2 equals to our current value so our offset become 4 so if we subtract this offset from this value we get 0 that means this is power of 2 so 1 plus we have the value right here that is 0 so 1 let's insert here 1 now let's move forward this is our next number we have to find out the number of 1 bit we have for this number 5 if we multiply this offset by 2 we get 8 it is not equals to 5 so we will not change this offset from this offset we get 4 it means that from the left of 5 the maximum number that is power of 2 is that is uh, 4 now let's represent this 4 in binary representation so 0 0 1 0 1 then 5 0 0 1 0 1 now let's find out the number we have in the next of 4 in the next of 4 that is not power of 2 so 5 6 7 this 3 number is not power of 2 so in order to compute the number of ones we have in this 3 number we have to find out the number of ones we have for this number 4 because in this 3 number we will have a bit we will have a bit that is 1 at the same position we have in this in this number 4 because we have this 3 number in the next number of this 4 this is the binary representation of 4 this is the binary representation of 5 we see that in this number 5 and if we write out this 3 number as well so 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 1 1 this is 6 this is 7 we see that at the same position we have 1 for all the number what we have in the next of this number 4 that is not power up to so we can say in this number 5 we have a bit that is 1 we are guaranteed that so we can find out the number of 1 we have for 4 using this formula dp offset the name of this table is dp dp offset plus dp now we have to subtract this number this number 4 from 5 if we subtract we get 1 now we have to find out the number of 1 we have in the representation of 1 we see 1 so you can find out that using this formula dp our current number minus offset we know that for dp offset 
offset is a number that is powered up to so we can write out here one instead dp offset so one plus dp i minus offset we can use this formula so here what you will get you will get two one plus one equals to two now for this number we know that we have one bit so one plus the binary representation of two six minus four equals to two so the binary representation of two is this here we have only one bit one one bit so let's add here two now for seven we see that we have here one because this seven is the next of this out of two so we have this set bit one one plus dp i minus offset i minus offset so seven minus four that is three for three we see that for three we have two we have two one so one plus two equals to three here we have three now let's move forward for eight we see that if we multiply this offset by two we see two times four equals to eight so let's change this offset this is our current value so we find it power up to so eight minus one plus dp i minus offset so we get this value zero so this is power up to we get the value here one now we are done we are done now what we're gonna do we are going to return we're going to return this list or this array so we're going to return this array now let's see one more example for better understanding now let's assume we are given n equals to 15 we have to find out the number of ones we have for all the numbers from 0 to 15 we have created this dynamic programming table we have index from 0 to 15 for 0 we have here 0 for 1 let's create here a variable offset of set equals to 1 initially so for 1 1 minus 1 equals to 0 so if we apply this formula 1 plus dp i minus offset we get this value 0 so we get value 1 so this is power of 2 now for 2 we see that 2 times 1 equals to 2 so let's change this offset so 1 plus i minus offset equals to 0 so here we'll get value 1 now for 3 what we will get for 3 we will get value 2 we already computed up to this point so for 4 we will have 1 at this point we will have offset equals to 4 then for 5 what we will have we will have 2 then for 6 what we will have we will have 2 for 7 we will have 3 then for 8 we will have 1 and offset will change to 8 now let's compute the number of ones we have for 9 so we have to compute the number of ones we have for 9 now we have to find out the offset which is 8 which is the maximum power of 2 the maximum power of 2 we have on the left of 9 if you look at the representation of binary number we see 9 is not power of 2 10 is not power of 2 11 is not power of 2 12 is not power of 2 13 14 and 15 are not the power of 2 so here this is this is our immediate power of 2 on the left this is the immediate power of 2 on the left or you can say this is the offset so if we compare with this one we see that for all the value we have on the next of this power of 2 for all the value at this position we have all one we have all one and here this 16 is power of 2 so from 8 to 15 we see that in the representation we have one for this corresponding position for all the numbers so if we have a number that is greater than 8 and not part of 2 so for all that number we have at the corresponding position this v to 1 so here we have the bit 1 so 1 plus dp i minus offset so 1 plus we added this number here so what we have to add in this position that we will make this number 9 so if we subtract 9 minus 8 we get 1 right so from 1 we get this so if we add this binary number right here we will if we add here then we will get this so 
the number of one we have here at power of two that is always just one and the number of one we have at one that is one we have here already so we're going to add two here let's move forward this is our next number 10 here we see that here we have one so one plus what we have to add in this three what we have to add in this three binary number to get this number we see that if we subtract 10 if we subtract 8 from 10 what do we get 2 if we add this number 2 if we add this number 2 right here we will get this number so the number of 1 we have for 2 and the number of 1 we have for 8 is the total number of 1's we have in the representation of 10 right so here let's add 2 let's move uh, forward this is our next number 11 here we see that we have already 1 so 1 plus now what do we have to add here to make this 3 digits 0 1 1 so what do we have to add here if we subtract 8 what do we get 3 so if we add this we will get this if we add this 3 digit if we add this 3 digit here then what we will get we will get this exactly this number so in the representation of 3 we have 2 1 and here we have 1 1 so 1 plus 2 equals to 3 here we have 3 let's move forward this is the next okay this is the next here we see that we have one already we have one here so we have here one right we have here one so one plus what we have to add in this three to make this three digit something like this one zero zero so if we subtract 12 minus 8 what do we get we get four we get four so if we add this one zero zero we will get this one zero zero here so the number of one we have in this in this number and the number of one we have eight is the total number of one we have for 12 that is two so for four we have one and for eight we have one now let's move forward now for 13 for 13 we see that we have already this one we have already this one this one is fixed so one plus dp we have to find out a binary number if we add the binary number in this three position that will make this three digit one zero one so if we subtract 13 minus 8 if we subtract 8 what do we get we get 5 so in the 5 we have this if we add this 3 right here we'll get this number also 5 plus 8 equals to 13 so here we have 2 and here we have here we have 1 so 1 plus 2 equals to 3 here we have 3 let's move forward this is our next this is our next number here we see this position one is already fixed and we will have all the bit set on the right we will not have on the left because we have this offset this is power up to so we will have all the bit set only on the right of one in this number right so here we have to change this three digit to one one zero how we can do that if we subtract 14 minus 8 what do we get we get 6 if we add this 3 we will get one 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 zero right also 8 plus 6 equals to 14 so for 8 we have 1 for 6 we have 2 so 3 we have total 3 1 in this binary representation let's move forward this is the next so here we see that 1 is fixed so 1 plus we have to make this 3 we have to make this 3 digit 1 so what do you have to add in this number so 15 minus 15 minus 8 equals to 7 if we add 7 that means this number we will get 1 1 1 1 so we'll get this value also 8 plus 7 equals to 15 so for 8 we have 1 for 7 we have 3 so here we have total 4 set bit okay now let's move forward if we have one more cell on the right here if we have one more cell which is 16 so in that case we have to check 2 times 8 equals to 16 so we have to change our offset to 16 and 16 minus 16 equals to 0 so 1 plus this value so we'll get here value 1 because this is power of 2 this is how this algorithm works if you have next on the next then we will consider this as power of 2 all the in all the number that we have in the next of 16 that is not power of 2 we will have at this position 1 so 1 plus if we apply this formula we will get the number of ones we have in the binary representation of that number okay I hope you've understood this video explanation this algorithm takes time complexity O of o of n 
it will not take off in times 32 we don't have to traverse all the bits we have for every single number and the space complexity is o of n for this dynamic programming table so if you're given n equals to 16 we have to return this array we have index from 0 to 16 so we find it all the so we find out the one bits for all the number from from 0 to 16 so we will return this array this is our answer now let's see the pseudocode then we will implement this algorithm let's call a function count count bits let's call this function here we receive an integer as parameter let's create here an array let's call it dv equals to new int integer array of length n plus 1 because we need from index 0 to index 16 for given n equals to 16 at the first position we're going to insert 0 because in the representation of 0 we have no 1 bit so this is 0 and we're going to declare a variable offset offset equals to 1 initially this variable will tell us the maximum power of 2 on the left of our current number now we have to iterate over from number 1 to number 16 so for i equals to 1 i less than equals to n i plus plus right inside here what we're gonna do first we're gonna check our offset because with the offset we're detecting the maximum power of 2 on the left of our current number so if we multiply this part of if we multiply this part of 2 that means this offset so offset times 2 if we see equals to i if this condition is true that means we find out another part of 2 so we have to update this offset by multiplying this offset by 2 so offset times equals to 2 in this variable we will store only the value that is power of 2 so this is our if statement now here we are going to apply this formula so dp i equals to 1 plus this 1 for we can use here something like this dp offset we will get for offset all edges 1 right plus dp i minus offset if the i is power of 2 we will get this value i minus offset is 0 so we will get the value 0 from here so here this value all edges will gives us 1 we can replace this with 1 so here 1 plus dp i minus offset this is our core logic when we are done at the end we are going to return our dp this dp array this is our algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity o of n we are solving this problem in single patch we see that and it takes space complexity o of n for the dynamic programming table now let's implement this algorithm using java programming language now let's implement our algorithm first let's create our dynamic programming table of length n plus 1 in this dynamic programming table we will store the number of ones we have for all the number from 0 to n let's insert at index 0 let's insert at index 0 0 this is the base case in the binary representation of this number 0 we have no one bit now let's create here a variable offset int offset equals to 1 this variable tells us the maximum power of 2 from 0 to current number now let's run in loop for int i equals to 1 i less than equals to n i plus plus from 1 to n now if we saw if our current number if current number i is power of 2 if we saw our current number i is power of 2 then we are going to change our offset with our current number so if we saw offset times 2 equals to equals to i that means our current number is power of 2 so let's change our offset with our current number right below here we're going to apply this logic dp i equals to dp of set plus dp i minus offset this will be evaluated 0 i minus offset if i is power of 2 so it will gives us the value 0 from the base case if i is power of 2 here we have this formula dp offset it will not work in order to make this working we have to add 
some line here we have to add two line inside this if statement because we need the value one at our offset before we run this line because we're using the value that we have already so here instead we can use one we know that in this position we will have always just the value one we will have always just the value one so we are going to use your one plus dp i minus offset okay so we don't have to add in this if statement to line and also we have to add a base case to handle if we use this code dp offset so here let's use one this will find out the number of one bits we have in our current number i this is our core algorithm this is our for loop when you are done with this for loop we are going to return dp this dynamic programming table stores the number of one we have for all the numbers from index 0 to index n so we are returning the dp array this algorithm takes time complexity o of n and it takes space complexity o of n as well for the dynamic programming table now let's compile this code we see it passed two sample test cases let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video welcome to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question missing number in this problem we are given an array of integers we have to return the missing number if we are given an array of length 4 the array can contains distinct integer from 0 to 4 what 4 is the length of the array so if we are given an array of length n the array can contains distinct integer from 0 to n let's write out the distinct integer from 0 to 4 0 1 2 3 4 we see that we are missing 0 in this array so we have to return we have to return 0 for this given array of integers if we are given this array of integers the length is 3 maximum number is 3 minimum number is 0 so this array can contains distinct number from 0 to 3 0 1 2 3 this array can contains these numbers we see that we are missing this number in this array so we have to return 2 for this given array of integers if we are given this array of integers the length is 2 so minimum number it can store 0 maximum number it can store 2 the distinct number we can have in between 0 2 is 0 1 and 2 we see that we are missing these integers 2 so we have to return 2 for this given array of integers if we are given this array of integers we see that the length of this array is n the minimum number it can store 0 so this array can store distinct number in this range from 0 to 9 we see that we are missing the number 8 in this range we're missing the number 8 so we have to return 8 for this given array of integers now let's see how to solve this problem first let's talk about the nave solution in the nave solution what we are going to do we are going to create a set data structure first we are going to iterate over our array first we have three let's store three in our set then zero then one so in our set we stored three zero one now we can check the numbers in constant time in our set data structure now what we are going to do we are going to find out the range minimum is zero maximum is the length length is three so we're going to run a for loop from zero to from zero to three we're going to run a for loop first we're going to check does zero exist in our set we see yes zero exist then we're going to check one does one exist in our set we see yes one exist then we're going to check two does two exist in our set we see no two does not exist so we are going to return two this nap solution will take time complexity o of n where n is the total number of integers we have in our given array or we can say n is the length of the given array 
and it will take space complexity of in as well this solution takes linear space complexity we can improve this solution we can improve this space complexity from linear to constant in our efficient solution we are going to use constant space now let's see how to solve this problem in constant space complexity in order to solve this problem efficiently first you have to understand bitwise exor operation we know that the nature of exor operation if we apply exor operation in between same number if we apply exor operation in between same number it evaluate zero the exor operation in between these two number two and two it's evaluated zero here this exor operation in between these two same number it's evaluate zero so the exor operation of zero and zero since zero and zero are the same it's evaluate zero if we have two number a and b if a and b are the same number then it will it will evaluate zero so the exor operation in between two same number evaluated zero now let's see how to solve this problem using the concept of exor operation first thing what we are going to do we are going to iterate over this iterate over this array first let's create a variable exor exor equals to zero now let's iterate over our let's iterate over our given array the first integer is three let's apply exor zero exor three the next number is zero so here exor zero then we have one so exor one we know that the array can contains distinct integer in this range from zero to from zero to the length the length is three so the distinct number in this range is zero one two three now we are guaranteed that one number disappeared in this array from this from this distinct set of numbers one number is disappeared in this array now if we apply exor in between the numbers of this array and the numbers of this array then what we will get now let's add here zero so exor zero then exor one exor two then exor three so we get this exor we are guaranteed that in this in this array we are missing one number and here we have that number we see that here zero here we have zero here we have one here we have one here we have three here we have three so if we apply exor operation this three and this three will evaluate zero this zero and this zero will evaluate zero this one and this one will evaluate zero then we are left with just two so we can return this value two so if we apply exor operations in between all the numbers we have in this two list then what we will get we will get the missing number here let's group the number together first we have here zero here we have zero so let's group them zero exor zero exor now let's group three here we have three here we have three so three exor three then let's group one so here exor one here we have one one exor one now let's group two we see that two is alone and we have one more zero which is uh, which is this zero so let's add here a zero we see that two and zero for this two and for this zero there is no group now this group will evaluate zero for sure so zero now we can group this zero and this zero so let's group it zero exor zero then here three and three are the same so let's let's evaluate it it will evaluate a zero now for this group one exo one it evaluate a zero let's group it zero zero then this two is alone there is no 
company of this two now it will evaluate zero then it will evaluate zero then two for this group zero exit zero is zero exit two for zero exit two it's evaluate two we get the missing number so this is our answer we can find out missing number using exit bitwise operator easily in constant space complexity now let's see how to implement this algorithm now let's implement our algorithm using java programming language first let's create a variable x0 equals to 0 now let's iterate over our array so for int i equals to 0 i less than nums i plus plus then right inside here x0 equals to x0 then x0 this is x0 bitwise operator and our current number so nums i in this loop we are iterating over our array and we are adding XOR operation in between all the integers now let's find out the range our range is 0 from 0 to n n is the length of our given array so int i equals to 0 i less than equals to the length nums dot length then i plus plus right inside here XOR equals to XOR XOR the XOR operator then i at the end here we're going to return XOR this is our algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity o of n and it takes space complexity o of 1 it takes constant space complexity instead using this two for loop we can combine it how we can combine it let's use one loop so int i equals to 0 i less than nums dot length i plus plus right inside here xor equals to xor then xor our current number nums i then the number from our range from 0 to n so here i but we are missing the number nums dot length so here let's assign the number in this variable instead 0 so nums dot length and here at the end we can just write an xor here instead doing this we can use shorthand operator something like this xor then here xor this is shortened xor operator so we find out the missing number here if we rename this xor variable with missing then here we can replace with missing and here missing so this is better naming convention this is our algorithm now let's compile this code we see it passed three test cases now let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully if you guys have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video welcome to this video in this video we are going to solve this coding interview question reverse bits in this problem we are given a binary representation we see this binary representation here we have total 32 bits we know that for integer we have 32 bits now we have to reverse this binary representation if we reverse we will get this binary representation so if we are given this binary representation we have to reverse this binary representation and we have to return this binary representation by reversing if we are given this binary representation if we reverse it we get this binary representation so if we are given this binary representation we have to return this binary representation now let's see how to solve this problem in this problem we are given an integer we are not given the binary number we are given integers the integer represent the integer represent in binary using 32 bits we know that integer text 32 bits for visualization purposes we are assuming that we are dealing with an environment where we have 8 bits for integers so it's easy to visualize here we have a binary representation of 8 bits 
now let's see how to reverse this binary representation this is our given binary representation now I'm going to create a variable reverse reverse equals to zero we are assuming we have eight bits for integer so we have this representation of this reverse reverse equals to zero we are going to reverse the binary representation and we're going to store the binary representation by reversing in this reverse variable now first thing what we have to do we have to take the last we have to take the last digit so if we take the last digit and if we insert at this position if we take this digit if we insert here if, and so on so if we take the digit from the right and if we insert from the left in this reverse variable then we get this binary representation in reverse order how we can do this how we can add this last bit to this first position this bit to this position this bit to this position and so on let's see how to do this first thing we're going to take the rightmost bit and we are going to shift the digit in this reverse variable to the left by one position if we shift after shifting what we will get we will get this binary number if we left shift we will see this binary number here we see zero is out of boundary this is overflowing the zero is overflowing this is our empty spot this spot will be filled with value zero by default here we are going to add the rightmost bit from our binary representation so let's check this and let's add here if we have a number in let's represent this binary representation and if we create a variable reverse initially reverse equals to zero so we take this first and we add it here how you can take the first how to check whatever value we have at this position whether zero or one we can check that using this formula one between and operation and in if we have at this position zero this will be evaluated zero if we have at this position one this will be evaluated one so using this we can find out the last digit or the rightmost digit so we can find out the rightmost digit using this one and n so this is right right most bit in our in our given integer and we're going to add at this first position how we can add that we can add that using this formula reverse or this this is between or operator reverse or one and n so if we apply this formula whatever value we have here it will be added at this position so we have to find out the rightmost bit using this and we have to add to this rightmost position using this formula so we have added here this one now what we have to do we have to move the left digit the left digit we have on the left of one at this position we're going to move this right here so we are going to do right shifting we can do right shifting using right shift bitwise operator and here we're left shifting using left shift bitwise operator so we we'll left shift here using left shift operator we will right shift here using right shift operator if we right shift by one position what we will get if we do here right shifting by one position we will get this binary representation we see this one is overflowing so it removed this position will be filled with zero let's leave it empty it will be filled with zero we're not going to fill it just for visualization purposes so we removed this and we added it at this position now we find out this right so we have this right here if we apply this formula we'll get this last digit this is our second last digit since we right shifted by one position so this is our second last digit now we have to add 
in the next of this one we have added this one here so we have to add this one to the right of one so we have to do left shift here if we do left shifting what we will get if we do left shifting we will get this binary representation we see this zero is overflowing so it's removed now let's get this using this formula one and in let's add it here now let's do right shifting now we have to access this this is third bit from the right so let's do right shifting if we do right shifting what we will get if we do right shifting this one is overflowing if we do right shifting we see this one is overflowing so it's removed this two is filled with zero by default this is just for visualization purposes it will be filled with zero now we see our third from the right is zero we can get this using this we have at this first position let's do left shifting if we do left shifting what we will get if we do left shifting we will get this binary representation we see zero is overflowing this will be filled with zero now we're going to add this whatever we have here using this formula so we'll add this zero right here now let's do right shifting if we do right shifting what we will get if we do right shifting the zero is removed now let's get this one let's add in the next of this so we have to do left shifting here if we do left shifting what we will get so if we do left shifting we will get this binary number the zero is removed now let's add this right here so we get here one now let's do right shifting here let's do right shifting if we do right shifting what we will get if we do right shifting we will get this last this last digit zero it's removed now let's get this let's add by shifting all the numbers to the left let's add the zero here by shifting all the digit to the left now let's add the zero right here we added the zero right here so if we do right shifting what we will get we'll get here zero one so we see this is the last now what we're gonna do we're gonna do left shift here if we do left shift we get this binary number the zero is removed now let's add one here now let's do right shifting so this number will be removed we have a total five empty spot it means that we have removed five number and we have added in this variable so we get this number let's do left shifting if we do left shift if we do left shift we get this binary representation the zero is removed now let's add one right here let's do right shifting so this one will be removed now let's get this last digit and let's add here by doing left shifting here so if we do left shift what we will get we'll get this binary number and zero is removed because it is overflowing now let's add one here let's do right shifting if we do right shifting one moves here we see that we have all empty empty digit if we do right shift one is move to the right so it is overflowing it's removed we see all the cell are empty it means that we have all the value zero here it means we have processed our eight digit we have processed our eight digit and we have added all the digit in our reverse variable in reverse direction so we get this binary number one 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 zero one zero one one this is how this algorithm works now let's see the pseudocode for this algorithm so if we call a function reverse reverse bits this function takes in integer as input first we're going to create a variable reverse reverse equals to zero initially we created this variable reverse reverse equals to zero we see that for eight bits we have to make eight operations we know that in our integer we have 32 bits for integer we have 32 bits so we have to make here 32 operations so for i from 1 to 32 we need 32 operations we'll make 32 operations first what we have to do we have to shift to the left in our reverse variable so reverse this is one reverse we have to do left shifting so reverse equals to reverse left shift by one position after left shifting we will get empty spot here we have to add the last from this binary number so we have to get 
the last so reverse reverse you have to add the last in here so reverse you have to add your bitwise or operator and if you apply bitwise and operate and operation in between one and this binary representation will get the last digit and it will be added to the end to this empty spot that we just get by shifted all the bits to the left then what do you have to do we have to do right shifting we have to remove the last we have to do right shifting so in right shift by one position this is our algorithm when you're done at the end we will return reverse now this reverse integer holds the reverse order of binary representation of n this algorithm takes time complexity of 32 all ages 32 is a constant so the time complexity is constant and the space complexity is o of one because we're using one variable reverse to solve this problem now let's see the implementation of this algorithm now let's implement our algorithm first we're going to create a variable reverse reverse equals to zero in this variable we will store the reverse order of binary representation of the given integer n now we have to made 32 operations because we have 32 bits for a integer so int i equals to 1 i less than equals to 32 i plus plus right inside here first we're gonna left shift all the bits to the left in this variable reverse so reverse left shift reverse equals to reverse left shift by one position now we have to add at the end position in this reverse variable by taking the last digit from n so reverse reverse equals to reverse bitwise all operator we can get the last digit from n using this one and n now we're going to do right shifting in this variable n this is our code algorithms when we're done we'll return the reverse integer this reverse integer holds the reverse order of binary representation of n this algorithm takes time complexity of 32 which is constant and it will take space complexity of 1 i hope you've understood this video explanation now let's compile this code it passed two sample test cases let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully if you guys have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video